what is good people of god welcome back to the channel welcome back to the platform eternal reward vision where i do my best i call and share with others to keep your eyes your heart your mind focused on the eternal reward which is christ and the rewards that are in christ the life that is in christ i am back today with part four of the series clarity and message to the remnant and to be aware um would bring clarity to the word remnant i'm more so speaking to the remnant of of god you should have an understanding a knowledge a personal working relationship with his holy spirit or desire and to be seeking that um with the love of god with the love for him based on the greatest commandment to do that with your all your heart your soul, your strength, um, to seeking him and knowing his will for yourself, because he will speak to you, um, and to, to, to desire to mature in that relationship with him and the communing of his Holy Spirit, that so that you're less likely to be led astray, so that this message to the remnant is to bring you clarity, um, but I'm going to be coming from scriptures today in this new message or part four of the series that um, also speaks of a remnant of remnant of people that God did call to himself. He calls he's calling many people to himself. He's called many people to himself, but they have fallen away. They have become lukewarm. They have been um, grown comfortable in their wilderness season or post wilderness season no longer following the lead of the lord if they were ever truly following the lead of the lord so a good portion of this message today will be about a warning to those who claim the name of the lord and if you have any additional questions or information i always suggest or i will suggest if you have if you haven't checked any of the description boxes of the the, the description box of any of the video other videos on this platform I would encourage you to do that as I usually add more scripture or additional information there. Any other questions, just go to the about tab on this channel and um, hopefully that, that leads you to where you are trying to go. And um, any other additional questions, uh, go to the Lord first, take it to him in prayer, seek him in his word and take it, take it to whatever is being presented to you in prayer so uh, that there is no deception. Amen. So a warning to those who claim the name of the Lord. I already released a preview of a few of the topics that I'm going to be speaking on. But this, again, the Lord is doing something new. So if you have listened to any of the other messages, the Lord has had me release as far as those messages that have turned into a series of messages. Um, you'll understand the pattern of how the Lord, or maybe you don't, but the Lord speaks to me through dreams. I've had some visions. I have, he speaks to me more so through dreams. And then my immediate um, communing with the Holy Spirit, my real time communication with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, a, it's a tangible communication. I, I'll just leave it at that until the Lord actually has me describe in detail, more so in detail that communing with his Holy Spirit, uh, again, because it is biblical. It, it is, it probably appears more of a mystery, but we're not going to get into that. Today, this message is about those who claim the name of the Lord. And this is based on another dream. And again, the series have normally, or in the past been centered around one dream and expanded there, rooted in the scripture, rooted in the living word, rooted in God, who is his word. He's the living word. But this is another dream. So the Lord is doing something different with this series. This is a, a second dream that the Lord had me understand. Um, this is going to be part of the series. This, this is the next part of the series. But this is still not the dream that I based all of this around. I was doing the old way that I had or the way that the Lord previously had me releasing messages centered around him and his messaging to me or his delivery to me through a dream. Um, but that isn't how this is going. I've had multiple dreams and this dream came, was given to me um, from the Lord on February 27th. And I almost rebuked this dream because I was like, 
yeah, this is not, it, it was really detailed and vivid, but I was just like, this don't, I don't know if this is from the Lord just because of what was happening in the dream. So before I rebuke the dream or assume that it wasn't for or from, for me or from God, um, and I get in more into the deception of dreams at some point too, later on in the series or the teaching of that. But, um, I had the Lord let me know, like, yeah, this is, I'm telling you something. I'm revealing something. And I think he may have been speaking to me before at one point in between this message, part four and part three. And I may have like somewhat dismissed the dream. I'm not quite 100% sure, but I caught it this time. So glory to God. And I thank him for the grace and the mercy um, to continue on and doing what he's calling me to do. So let's, uh, this is kind of familiar to, or based on scripture coming from Isaiah chapter 50, verse four and Proverbs chapter uh, 15, I believe it's verse 23, because I didn't write the verse down. This is related to a word in due season as well. So I pray that this message is a blessing to you in this season because this the messages that I'm delivering, some of them may sound really familiar and maybe somewhat redundant. Paul said that he had no problem writing, continually writing to the the churches that he um wrote to that he the Lord had him establish. Like um it brings him joy. I'm I'm I have to I find the joy in doing what the Lord has called me to do. Not necessarily, I can be honest and say, I don't find there's no joy in knowing that I speak, I've had the Lord has had me speak things to people and they just dismiss it, but that's their opportunity, opportunity to receive the Lord. So Isaiah 50 and four kind of is more about, is still both of the uh, sets of scripture are about receiving a word in due season. But Isaiah chapter 50, verse four describes the prophet receiving a message, um, the prophet understanding that he is being used to receive a message in due season, to deliver a message in due season. And Proverbs is, a you know, a writing of, I believe, um, King, King Solomon. So I'm seven minutes in. I don't want to make this video too long. My messages on this channel, or what the Lord has me share, are usually quite a bit of time. So... Let's get right into the dream. This is a message in due season because these are things that the Lord is bringing to judgment now or in this season as he's having me share these things. In the dream, and it wasn't a very long dream, I was in a very crowded building and I had an understanding that I was in a church. It was very dimly lit. It almost felt like the lights were off in this church, right? Um, Very dimly lit. It was very warm. It felt like I was at like a basement party or something. If you like ever, if you're old enough or you've been to somewhere where, I don't know, just an event, a, a nightclub where the heating or the cooling, um, not to bring back, you know, those days of walking in darkness, but the familiarity of that or the desire to want to go back to that. But it was like very hot, like there was no air conditioning, no fan really going. Um, but that didn't really seem to bother the people in the building. People were moving around like it was, it felt kind of claustrophobic to me as to the, the size of the space and the number of people that are walking around. So I'm kind of just standing there and I noticed people walking around, kind of touching it. And as they walk past each other, like they're so close, like people bumping shoulders and so forth. So. As I'm standing there, I'm watching people kind of interact, and I notice that there's a stage immediately to my right in this small building. And again, I understand, have an understanding that it's a church at some point, but I'm like, it was confusing as to why it was a church, and that was what was happening. But then there's a stage to the right that the curtains are closed, and then I have an understanding through the Holy Spirit that everyone is there, and they're kind of um, enjoying themselves in a carnal sense, waiting for the show to start. And then I have an understanding that the show that they're waiting to start or the play that's going to be performed on the stage is the color purple. The play never actually started while I was in the dream, but that's what I had an understanding that the color purple was going to be what was performed on the stage. So at some point I, I'm there in the dream and next thing I noticed, a celebrity walks past me. 
The only problem is this is a celebrity that has passed on um, quite a bit of number of years ago. So who is this celebrity? The celebrity was um, James Brown. Uh, if hopefully nobody's too young to know who he is, but you can look up James Brown, um, pretty well known um, singer from, uh, I believe, Macon, Georgia. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have to get in too much into it. His name is James Brown. So he walks by, he looks healthy. He's walking by and join the crowd, like in the event, James Brown. I thought that was weird. Next thing I know, right behind, to the right of me is a stage, but there's like a, uh, I'm standing somewhat in a doorway or a hallway that opens up into the front of the stage. Uh, the opening for the crowd or standing space for the crowd is to my left, but where I'm standing is kind of the end of the hallway. And that space uh, or the entrance to this room to, of the church and behind me would be the entrance of the church. But to the left behind me is an entrance to a restroom. So as I'm standing there, um, just kind of seeing all these things happening around me in somewhat a state of confusion, I, like that was kind of be understood. Like it was confusing as what was going on. I noticed that there's a number of women and men um, and they seemed like, like young women and young men, they began to walk past me together um, from another opening and maybe some people that were in the room already. They walked past me and they were going into the restroom. And I was like, wait a minute, they're going into the same restroom. So I noticed them like there's a line of these individuals. There's one young man, one young woman, and there's another young man, another young woman. And they're one of the others kind of leading each other, they're leading each other to the bathroom. So if the man's not leading, the woman's leading. Um, they're being, they're leading each other to the restroom and there's no real, there's no door or the door is open to the restroom. So I look as they begin to enter, they walk past me um, on to my right and into the restroom that's behind me on my left. And I walk into the restroom and to look in there, like, why would they go into the same restroom? I look in the door and I notice that they're going into the stalls together. Now, I won't get into detail about what was really going on, but I knew what was like, it, uh, there were people waiting outside of the stalls. So the stalls, they closed the doors, but uh, I'm not even gonna tell you to use your imagination. Like there was perverse fornication, things like that was what was going on in these restrooms. Everything against God was happening in this church. So I saw that and I was like, that is what is really going on. So I just looked into the bathroom and I saw that this happening. I turn around and I um, then I noticed that I'm standing next to two people that I know in waking life. And, um, their names are significant. So who's standing there as I turn around in confusion and kind of like, yeah, this, there's too much going on in here. I need to go. I'm standing next to someone named Malcolm to my left and to the left of Malcolm is someone um, named Joel. So as I'm standing next to Malcolm, I say nothing to neither one of them they're just standing there kind of doing whatever. But Joel looks at me. I say nothing to him. I don't make any, like there's no interaction. He reaches up and he basically mushes my face. Like he doesn't really smack me, but he mushes me in an intent. I guess like it was, he was being an attempt, an attempt to attack or be offensive to me. And I was kind of shocked. Like I felt myself kind of wanting to be carnal in the sense that I know you didn't just put your hands on me, but I didn't do that. I turned immediately and looked at Malcolm who was standing in between us and Malcolm just kind of stood there like, well, okay, you know, it is what it is. That's basically what happened. So 
as I thought to want to be like, you know what? No, I'm going to, I'm going to return the favor to Joel. So I didn't retaliate, but I did have some strong, I, like I had, I had a strong response. Like, I don't remember exactly what I said, but, um, yeah, I had a strong response for, for Joel when he, after he mushed me and I put my flesh in check because it was, it almost, I felt like my response was going to be, I'm going to, re like, again, return the favor physically, but I didn't. And that was the end of the dream. So something should be obvious. The fact that this place that I was in was a church. Again, I said earlier in the message, this is a warning to those who claim the name of the Lord. Maybe your church does not physically sound and look like this, but this is why this is the things that the Lord has me sharing is more spiritually mature. Scripture tells us that we go from babies in Christ to being, we're called to be mature in Christ. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 speaks of that we, our minds be renewed. We renew our minds every day. We ch your minds will be renewed in a sense, renewed and rooted in the word of God, that we can attest to God's, that we can confirm God's good and perfect holy will for our life. Not just assume that this is God's holy will, not be in a church thinking that I'm worshiping the Lord or claiming the name of the Lord, claim just saying glory to God, saying I read my Bible, all of this stuff, I give my tithes, whatever you're claiming, know that you can confirm, attest to be sure of God's good and perfect will. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul speaks of being persuaded that the good work that the Lord has begun in us will be basically fulfilled. It will be continued until the coming of the Lord. So we are, in a sense, it goes in alignment. Again, it's not contradicting Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It's still of the Lord. It's in, in, um, in the sense that it is a continuation, a renewing. As we live, as we continue to claim the name of the Lord, there has there will be some growth. We are called to go from babies in Christ, from glory to glory, to going from elementary things to being more mature in Christ. So you can't claim the name of the, we should not want to claim the name of the Lord and still only operate in elementary teachings while for years upon years, while the Lord is giving us grace every day to mature in him and to be led by his spirit, to grow on the foundation of elementary things. Many will grow in elementary teachings and mature in teachings of this world, but they'll still only desire or choose to intentionally only operate in elementary teachings of God's holy word, which the things that he's teaching is for eternal life, but still people will only decide or choose to want to desire or fearfully back down to only operate in elementary teachings of the word, but they'll mature in teachings and influence of this world that leads to death. We can't do that. We're not called to do that. The Lord reveals things. He won't, as scripture says in the book of Amos, that he, Amos, that he deals, he reveals things to his prophets. That doesn't mean that you have to look like a prophet in the Bible and what a prophet looks like, according to what all of those prophets in the scripture look like. But be very careful to, to think that you are a baby in Christ. And you, uh, I've seen this described before as, heard this described describe before as being a baby that wants to eat steak and sirloin. You, you're still on milk. It's a process. It's a process, but don't compare your process to somebody else and don't reject who the Lord may truly be using. That is someone that is truly bearing the fruit of being alive in Christ because everybody in that church that represented the warning of people today that church in the dream, that's for the warning of people today, people who think they are alive in Christ, people who claim the name of the Lord. There was very, there was sexual encounters and fornication happening in the bathroom. 
the restroom of this church. There was the, the church was like a nightclub. They were waiting for a, a, a play to be entertained by the color purple. It represented a, all of that was happening. It represented a lot of idolatry, a lot of sin against God, sinning against God. And I'm going to be coming from particular books and scriptures that the Lord led me to for this message. One of them being the book of Micah. So I'll encourage you to read the entire book of Micah. Micah is an Old Testament book, but I'm not going to read the entire uh, portion or the entire book. I'm going to touch on a couple of chapters, the book of Micah, the book of Revelations, um, the book of First Timothy, Second Timothy, and the book of Matthews, chapter 22. Um, so with that being said, uh, yeah, that, that dream kind of just, that church and what was happening represented people, the idolatry and the sin, sin is idolatry is a sin um, of everyone operating and walking around in churches today who think they are alive in Christ. They walked around in darkness in this church. There was no real lights on in this church. There was nothing holy about what was going on in the church. Um, and I'll describe how it, it is going to, I'm going to speak on some things again, like Matthew 22, it describes the wedding feast. If you're not familiar with that parable from scripture, um, among a, a couple of other things. So now let me, I'm going to read from Revelations chapter three, one through six, because it describes the pastor and the leaders of that church. What was happening in the dream describes the pastors and leaders of churches today, not all churches, but there's only a remnant, a small portion of faction of people who are truly walking in alive in God, being a led, being led by his spirit. Many people believe that they are truly alive in God. They go to church. They make church jokes. People play in, they plan in the Lord's face, but I'm telling you this, this word and season these things the Lord is having me sharing, it, people are going to understand. There's going to be a whole, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And people, you're going to be wondering like, Lord, why me? When the Lord was using people, me among other people, us just being vessels, doing what the Lord calls us to do, giving other people an opportunity to recognize, maybe you yourself, to recognize Am I being upset about this message from the Lord? Am I trying to attack who's bringing the message despite them not having anything to do to come against me with this message? Be mindful of that. Why is the Lord using this person? That's You have to check your heart to see it because those things are not of the Lord. Those feelings, those emotions, those desires that come behind me delivering this message are not of the Lord. Rejecting what I'm talking about is not of the Lord. So when the weeping and the gnashing of teeth come, that's just describing a portion of scripture of how the Lord's judgment and wrath will have people feeling. Um, there's can't be a lot of shock. It's like, seriously, like you're going to want to seek the Lord for what's coming and you can't be mad at nobody else, but yourself, honestly. And I guess the devil. Um, so I'm going to read from revelations three, chapter three, one through six. And this is to the pastors or the church of the angel of the church of Sardis or the pastors of the church of Sardis. Um, and write unto the angel of the church, which is at Sardis. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works for thou hast a name that thou livest, but thou art dead. People, they have a name. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to break that down after this. My bad. Verse two. Be awake and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy work perfect before God. This is Christ speaking, by the way. This is Christ speaking to John in the book of Revelation. So that's what this, the verse one is speaking about Christ. 
he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He is Christ has not found the works of these people who are in this church perfect before God. But people speak about not being perfect, but we are made whole in God. We are made perfect in God to attest. I mentioned Romans chapter 12, one through two, to know God's good and perfect will for our lives. We mature. We may struggle with one plus one for however long in pre-K or um, kindergarten, first grade, whatever, whatever form of math or learning. But by the time that you reach, you know, graduation at, at 12, level 12, those things should so it should be almost be secondary, secondhand, like understanding, um, almost a reflex to understand the answer to those type of things and those things of that nature from pre-K and kindergarten and, and so forth. But I'll digress. Verse three, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou wilt not, wilt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Notwithstanding, thou hast a few names yet in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh shall be clothed in white array, and I will put out his name, and I will not put out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Let him that hath an ear hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. That was verse six. So I'm going to leave that there and reference that as I go through what some of these things meant or represented in the dream. People were waiting, the people in the church were all there waiting for the color purple um, it's a movie. It's also a stage play. It's a book. I believe the movies are based on the book. Excuse me. It's a musical. They recently did release the, the Color Purple or, or the musical version of it, the end of 2023. But they were waiting on the Color Purple to be performed on that stage in the church. The Color Purple um, in the dream, waiting for this performance, represented idolatry of entertainment. People are struggling. People who claim the name of the Lord are struggling with idolizing celebrities and the things of celebrity natures. Idolizing, you don't know, you don't have a real working relationship with the Lord. You can pray, you can do all the, the, the rituals that come with going to church, whatever day that you choose, going to Bible study, tithing, doing all these things, but you still have not, you're still not truly alive in the Lord. Id idolatry and focusing, idolatry again is a sin, focusing on entertainment. That's what that represented. They were waiting for this performance. Why the color purple? That was purple. It represents royalty. This was a false idolatry of being royal. I'm a child of God is what many will say, but they don't, they're not sealed in the Holy Spirit. They don't have a testimony of, of the spirit communing with their spirit that telling them that they are a child of God, testifying to their spirit as Romans, I believe what eight and 16 speaks and just Romans eight in general in that portion of being adopted into the kingdom of God. We should be bearing fruit of this experience that we claim to be this 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 state that we claim to be a child of God, to be of his royalness, to be of his holiness. We should bear fruit of that. Not this facade of watching it being the royalness, the royalness of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords to be performed around us, but also being aware that we are called to be in Christ, that he that greater is he that is in me than he that is within this world, that we are called to be a reflection of the image that we are made in. So it should be also coming from the inside out, not the idolatry of what someone has put together that they claim to be the, the presence or the royalty of the color purple and what that represents spiritually in the kingdom of God.
you should be, we should be able to share the testimony of these things, of the kingdom of God, of the leading of his Holy Spirit. Unless the Lord specifically would tell us not to, or has, it's just not time to share what is needs, to, what he's, people are inquiring about, but we should be able to have a testimony of these things that we claim of the leading to be led by his Holy Spirit. Again, bearing fruit of that testimony as well. So don't get, this shouldn't be confused with people who, again, claim the name of God. I'm this, I'm that, whatever. I preach to other people, whatever you think you may be doing in the name of the Lord. Be careful because he sends his own. Be careful not to be a baby in Christ or to be a little bit more mature, but preaching on things that are far more mature or the things that the Lord never called you to teach and preach on. There will be some judgment that comes behind bringing confusion to other people. Having a good intent. I was just reading a portion of that in... Um, We'll read about this a little bit more as I continue in the message, but even in the book of Amos, Amos that I was reading today, um, good intent is doesn't free us from the consequences of the judgment. We still have to repent and, and most definitely we, we should want to bring correction um, to wherever we have been teaching what was wrong and what was not the true understanding of the Lord. So before I lean back into explaining what was being um, more clearly what was being revealed in the dream. I want to reference really quickly 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, which speaks, um, which says, let no man despise thy youth, but be unto them that believe in example, in word, in conversation, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in pureness. For those who may want to come against what the Lord is having me share, as they prop some have probably done in the past. Um, the Pharisees came against what Jesus was speaking to, but again, they didn't hold a testimony of the Holy Spirit or bear fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, the Father that they claim to be of. Um, this is where I can kind of relate to like so many different people in scripture. Um, and this portion, I could say like, I can relate to many different people, but specifically at this point and how the Lord is using me and how long that I've been walking with Christ and how I commune with his Holy Spirit, um, how long I've been reading the word for myself. Uh, this is where I guess I could say I relate. I feel like I can relate to um, the prophet Jeremiah. Again, not calling myself a prophet. I address this at some point again in the scripture as Amos, um, the prophet Amos uh, or in the book of Amos, he speaks to someone who calls him a prophet. It's more so like one side is like, Lord, you have me speak and tell people like who have probably been in church longer, who have been teaching and preaching on things, as I've spoke about in the preview of this message of things that are just not true and are not the Lord's understanding. I guess using whoever the Lord decides to use is a test to those who have, may have already been walking for so long or who have been considered themselves to be so studied. Just like the Pharisees considered themselves to be so studied in the law, Jeremiah came on the scene into where, you know, the Lord told him, you're not a boy, you're basically, you're a man. Uh, speak what I tell you to speak. Uh, to have someone that is to be the people of Israel and have someone that comes, comes on the scene that you're like, how old are you? Like, what are you doing? How long have you been walking with the Lord? Um they also nicknamed Jeremiah the weeping prophet. I wouldn't, I can kind of relate to that at certain points, but it's more so like, Lord, they're not wanting to listen to what you're talking about anyway. So that's why I can kind of relate to Jonah too at this, at this point. But um, as long as I'm doing what the Lord is calling me to do, I'm going to stick to that. That's above any relationship or feeling relationship to somebody else's feelings. That's kind of what got King Saul in trouble. He was more so worried about what the people, how the people felt about what the Lord told him to do instead of doing what the Lord told him to do. So I can just, I feel like at this point, I, as it relates to this, um, just mind, be mindful of your feelings and your emotions and your flesh and your pride or ego that may have you thinking like, who are you? Because it's, you know, um, it's not necessary. This is about 
truly being back realigned with the true understanding of the Lord, how this the Lord is speaking and tearing down false teachings, false ideology, and also telling about the judgment in due season. And again, what this dream is speaking as I continue on in this series of the remnant, a message to the remnant. Um, but again, the color purple, the carnal watching of the carnal purple is a flesh, the fleshly desire to be idolizing and worried about the color purple instead of actually having a working, a true to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. You don't even have that relationship intact that you worried about all these things of the world. If you're truly about the Lord, when Jesus called his disciples, they stopped what they were doing immediately. And when and it was all about the Lord after that. So would it look like that for you today? Not exactly, but you should want if you have a true encounter, if you really start to believe like, you know what? The Lord is real. He died for my sins. I, I'm going to open this door and start to have this faith walk. And I'm going to I'm learning that you say, it says that we die to ourselves. We die to and become a new creature. So I have to die to what I used to think and what I used to believe and believe and consume what is true, what the word says about me, what the living word says about me, because it says that God is his word. So I have to believe and find that to be true. No matter how somebody else feels, that's how God feels about me. I will repent. I am forgiven. I will forgive. I will walk in the glory of God. I will seek his will and I will get up when I fall. I will mature. It's not a race, but I'm going to continue to mature and be led wherever the Lord is leading me. I will follow wherever I find where he's leading me. But that is not what's happening in many of these churches today for those who claim the name of the Lord. Um, the color purple also it represented spiritual garments, true royalty. God is king of king, Lord of lords. Purple is represented as a color of royalty. So the idolatry of focusing, their focus was to watch the color purple, to be focused on royal garments. That's what I meant by speaking on, just making the claim that I'm a child of God. Will you still hold strong to that? I'm a child of God when the wrath of God and judgment of God comes upon you. When he sent people to try to give you to give you his understanding that you will repent and enter and re to receive the kingdom of heaven that is available. Not to be walking in darkness like people in this church in the dream. That's what that represented. They were still walking in spiritual darkness. It was a, the dream is a spiritual message from the Lord. Representing, speaking of what's happening today. You, no, you're not literally you may not be literally going into church. Where that is, it, it doesn't look like that. But spiritually, the whole the Holy Spirit ain't there. Somebody might be gyrating and shaking or convulsing or whatever in the corner, and the preacher may be saying, Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit on this. But spiritually and in the spirit, that could be that same environment could be a room filled with darkness. God knows He He knows the hearts and He, he tests the hearts and He knows our thoughts. So if he was to reveal the thoughts of some of these churches and many churches, it would look like what was happening um, in that dream. Believe that that's not what's happening in your church. Everybody's well dressed. They got on these clothes They're whatever. Scriptures being read. There's a praise team. It could be still and it's still spiritually dark in your church. This is what that represented. Well, I focus on being a royalty, the royalty of God, that being a child of God, the performing, focusing on the performing of God. God is not the focus. The greatest commandment is not what is happening. It appears to be that the people waiting for the color purple to be performed can look like and sounds like they're waiting on God. But we are to be found in God through Christ. So we are wearing the, the garments of, of royalty, that we are in royalty. I have a word that I shared, I believe it was 2022, about um, accepting the message or the invitation. See, that was the Lord using, speaking to me through a gift, but that would be an example of having a testimony 
of the Lord. I received an invitation. Basically, I, that's what the message was about, except the invitation from the Lord. So you can go back and look at that message um, in the channel on the platform. I'm pretty sure it is from 2022, about August, maybe July, August 2022. Um, but that would be an example of having a testimony of something that is spiritual testimony, something that I didn't I didn't go to sleep and ask for that dream. I had to seek the Lord and what it meant. But there was a rep, there was a portion of that message that spoke about changing clothes and there was an event. There was a happening that I was at. I was attending a, attending an event. Um, so you can go back and listen to that. But again, that would be an example. That would not be necessarily the mature fruit, but that would be a sign of the fruit of the Lord. The fruit should continue to be being bared. It says we bear fruit in and out of season when we are planted by the river. That's where we are. We are called to mature to these levels in the Lord. So that shouldn't be the that dream wouldn't be the only thing that you go by as on 2024, February 29th to be like, OK, is he still walking with the Lord? No, you need to be still paying attention to my fruit. The fruit I bear that should be of the Lord of his kingdom. You can't go all the way back then. That's a sign. That was a good sign. Cool. Is he still walking with the Lord? Are you still walking with the Lord? Is this person preaching to you at your church, whoever you're listening to, allowing to feed you, are they still walking with the Lord? Are they spiritually mature enough to actually be teaching and preaching on the things that they are sharing or attempting to teach? Or are they bringing you confusion that you are in darkness? In this church of the dead. This represented the church of Sardis. The first two verses of the church of Sardis. Um, the church of Sardis or Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. Verse 1 says Christ is saying. I know thy works for thou hast a name that thou livest but thou art dead. You have a name. They have a name that they're alive, but they're dead. So let me, I'm going and getting ahead of myself. That was the color purple, basically. Idolatry of entertainment, focusing on entertainment. If you're listening to somebody that is always talking about celebrities and entertainment, they're leading you astray. When the wrath of the Lord comes upon you, there will be, you can't say, oh, it was this person. You came into agreement with this false gospel. So now you're going to receive the agreement that you came into when you were called to be in agreement with the spirit of the Lord. I'm speaking the things of the Lord that lead you away from that, to lead you back to the Lord, to point you back to the Lord, to worship him in spirit and truth. Other individuals are, that I know for sure that I could point you to their channels as well and the messages from the Lord from them. But if you reject all of this for whatever reason coming from the Lord, that's that's just you. That's not our fault. It's not the Lord's fault. Um. Let's talk about um now James Brown. James Brown was in the dream. James, the name James means supplement, uh, supplanter. If I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Supplanter and nurtured. To be a supplanter um, means to supersede or to replace. Nurture. I gained understanding of it meant the wilderness season. To be nurtured, a place that we are, uh, the Lord has allowed us to be nourished for a time and a time and a half or a certain time period that the Lord allows us to be nourished. I gave this revelation from the Lord as it speaks of the book of Revelation chapter 11, that all of we as individuals, we have to go to exactly what our wilderness season looks like. It's not going to be exact identical for everybody, but at some we have to go to a place where the Lord calls us and then we have to go and whether we have other people around us around us that the Lord has ordained to help us through that process or he calls us through it along with him. But it's a place that is we are the Lord has prepared for us that we get that we be nourished by him that nothing will come again. Things will come against us, but we should know that we are there to be nourished by the Lord and to come out of the wilderness. That's essentially what 
um, Revelation 12 is talking about and to carry the testimony of the Lord as uh, to carry the testimony of the Lord. To be bearers, the holders of the testimony of the Lord. We represent the woman going into the wilderness and then the children, the birthing, dying to old and becoming new, a new creation um, in the Lord, carrying the seed, the testimony of the Lord that Satan is going to come against as we as it goes transitions from verse 12. I mean, excuse me, chapter 12 to chapter 13 in Revelations. That's one of the facets of that understanding of biblical mystery that I've seen preached wrong at least twice where I'm like that don't even yeah carnal people using their carnal understanding and using trying to use books that other men have created but they don't hold a testimony of the Lord God's wisdom is greater than the, any the wisest person in this world James Brown supersede replace. Um, James is also representing dead spirits. He was James Brown is he, the celebrity in in real life. He's dead. He's been dead for years. He's passed on. He represented old garments instead of being truly made alive in Christ. Give me a second. Um, Verse one, I know thy works for thou hast a name that thou livest, but thou art dead. The music of James Brown may be alive today. You can play his music, but James Brown is dead. People may have, they go around and this church may seem like it's very lively in the spirit of God, but they are spiritually dead. They appear, but that's why you have to, it's a spiritually mature message. So that's why you have to understand you you can maybe thinking like well they're not physically dead the people are alive in this church yes they are physically alive but they are spiritually dead because they are not residing and they are not sealed in the holy spirit they believe they are sealed in the holy spirit but you have to be continually led in in the holy spirit as i said yes i have shared a dream a message from the lord about having an invitation from the lord in 2022 but if I had not continued to walk with the Lord, that dream didn't mean nothing. Don't confuse those no dreams or whatever. Somebody, some people hear from false spirits. You can't confuse none of that with the Holy Spirit. That's why you get to know him for yourself. He will not contradict his word. If someone, a, a, a messenger sends you something, you, you free to listen. Take it to the word. Take it to the Lord in prayer. As you as you search the word, as you seek him in prayer for a response, for the answer, um, you have an opportunity to find out what you already know is a lie, what somebody else already taught you wasn't true, or you if you immediately reject it because that ain't your pastor, that ain't whoever you let speak to you, that's fine. You may be listening to someone like James Brown in the dream, someone who is spiritually dead. What is James Brown? He was a celebrity. People that are worshipped in our society, worshipped in Babylon. This is a, a society of confusion. This country, this world does not glorify the true will of God. This world, the, the people that run this world and this nation do not worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Daniel in the book of Daniel was in captivity along with the other um, young men of Judah. They were in a foreign a foreign nation that did not worship the only living God. Um. So yeah, you may be listening to someone that is like a celebrity. Your pastor may be like a celebrity. People, whatever in your church is, there's a celebrity. There's the uh, someone that is never made it out of their wilderness season. James meant nurtured, still being nurtured was a place to be nurtured. They may be nurtured in the carnal now. They, you pay them good. You tithe good. People buying jet planes and stuff and saying that the Lord, that was the Lord's will that you, you pay for their jet planes. And yeah, I mean, I've seen that. I thought some of this stuff would have people like kind of really going back to the Lord in prayer, but you know, yeah. People that want to be friends, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, 
their importance, their focus. They don't have a testimony of the Holy Spirit and the adoption ship into the Lord and led by the Holy Spirit. Children of God will be led by the Spirit of God. That's what scripture says. They don't hold that testimony, but they can show you all the celebrity relationships and hanging out or whatever. Celebrity, celebrity. James Brown is dead. Many people walk around thinking that they are in the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit, and they're not. This is an opportunity to come out of agreement with that and be a part of the true remnant of God and begin to walk in his will before the wrath of God actually comes upon those who are not his own. That he will just he will righteously judge. For he is a righteous judge. Um, these individuals, James represented not truly being reconciled with the father reconnected to God through Christ. They could look like it. James Brown in the dream looked like he was dressed very well. He looked healthy. He looked like old, like a celebrity James Brown. And his, the highlight of his, I guess his career. And I probably wasn't really alive or aware of who he was at that point um, as what he looked like, but he looked healthy and like lively with his dress of his clothes in the dream. Um, it also represented because James means supp supplanter, supersede, replace. It also means represented James Brown in the dream represented an attempt. All in, excuse me. It represented an, an attempt to replace or supersede the glory of God that is not represented in dead spirits or the color brown. James Brown, a replace to be replaced. Um to supersede he was the celebrity in the party are you honoring and worshiping somebody above god don't just say that you're not doing it with your mouth but you do it you i you idolize them you you seek them first you don't go to the lord first You always have a question for them, whoever it is at the church, instead of picking up your Bible for yourself. If it's something you don't understand, say that. But you don't even pick up the Bible, but you always got a question. You don't even take it to the Lord first. The superseding, attempting to replace the true glory of God. And dead spirits doing this. Satan wanted to be God. He was cast out of heaven. He wanted to be what God, who God is, which he can never be. The color brown does not represent the glory of God. James Brown was a celebrity. He's he represented now. So again, see this with spiritual eyes and have I hope and spiritual ears, and I hope you have the understanding of what is being represented here. James Brown, again, represented celebrity, idol worship, idol worship, worshiping idols, worshiping them as idols. Their lifestyle is idolatry. Celebrity worship. Um, um, again, people who glorify or find they glorify their place in the wilderness and their nourishment in the wilderness. But we're not called to stay in the wilderness. The Israelites wanted to stay in, the, they didn't want to stay in the wilderness. Some of them complained. Some of them wanted the food they used to have in the wilderness. They questioned God and complained about where they were going and what they were doing. The wilderness trek, the, the journey from Egypt to their promised land is an 11 day trip. That's in scripture, but it turned into 40 years. 11 days went to 40 years. This is people who they may be in your, you may have been in this church. They may be your leader in whatever capacity, prophet, whatever they call themselves, whatever title they shouldn't be giving themselves, doctor, whatever. They may have been there four years, but they have, they never exited the wilderness season. How, what is the fruit of this? They can't, they don't have the testimony, a continued testimony of the being led by the Holy Spirit. 
I can't go back and just keep giving you a testimony from 1992 about my how I met the Lord. How how is he still leading me today? And if if he's leading me today, I want to hear give me a testimony on that. And if that testimony contradicts the, the living living God, then I got a problem. You should have a problem. Is what they're telling you, what the hell they're leading you, what they're how they're breaking scripture down. If you go read that for yourself, if you take that to the Lord, because it's it's not quite making sense to you as you grow and mature in the word, something kind of ain't right about what they're teaching. It's not reflecting the spirit of God. Then I I got some questions. Yeah, you had a testimony. You say you walk with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit ain't it may not be there no more. The oil you claim to have may not be there no more. A tree planted by the river is what we're called to be. The river is God, supplying fruit in all in and out of season, season, evergreen, green in and out of season, producing fruit in and out of season. That's what the Lord does. Now, it, it may look like he shuts up heaven on those people who don't know him at some point. But we're called to, to be strong if in the wilderness season. It could look like it, it could look kind of tough going from Egypt to the promised land could seem kind of tough. But greater is he that is within us than he that is in this world. There's plenty of encouragement from the Lord and he will have other people encouraging you in in his holy will to be deep, to go deeper in deeper with him in his spirit, choose his will above worldly advice, carnal advice, people who uh, say that they have godly counsel. Again, this represented glorifying being in the wilderness season and glorifying the wilderness season. That, that was a church in the dream. They, it, it could look like a church. But that was not the true will of God. That's not how church should be operated. If that was even just um, based on just truly knowing the Lord, what was happening in that church was not of God. It was not leading anybody closer to God. There was bar barely, if any, light in that church. Fornication in that church spiritual things you can be you can spiritually you can be um what is it spiritual adultery is in scripture that's like idolatry you want to still claim the name of the lord by make but while at the same time making something else an idol that you place before the lord you go to that you long for that you worship that you seek that you enjoy that you seek that more than the lord idolatry again i give the revelation of three and a half years as scripture speaks of it multiple times in the other series that i've had to share as well so i if you need to go back to listen to other series and do that but um again this is a more mature message many know that they don't have the spiritual maturity and understanding that god desired them to have or gain in the wilderness season. As we're nourished in the wilderness season, we should be getting stronger in what the Lord has called us to and who he's called us to be. It's a place prepared for the woman. The wilderness season may not be very familiar. It may not be very comfortable, but it's a place prepared by the Lord. You will be all right. No matter what it looks like, you're going to be all right. You will have what you need. The purpose is to grow in what, what and who the Lord has called you to be in him, that you become rooted in him. Upon exiting the wilderness season that nobody can shake you from the Lord. Attacks going to come. That's Revelation 13. The beast will attack. There will be time where the, the these things, the attacks are coming. That's going to happen while we are while we hold the testimony of Jesus Christ while we are walking this earth. As we remain the light of this world. This world does not love the children, the true children of God. 
but no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And if it appears that it does at some point, it it, it really is really not. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. Uh, just be mindful that it, it this appears to be James Brown, celebrity worship, people attempting to replace the glory of God and teach on things that they're not spiritually mature to teach on. They're not spirit. They're not actually spiritually alive in the Lord. This represented again, the church of the dead church of Sardis, the church of the dead is just another um, name that I believe in. I, maybe the new King James version actually says uh, calls the church of Sardis. Thou hast a name that thou livest, but thou art dead. Verse two says, be awake and strengthen and strengthen the things which remain. The things of the Lord that remain stronger, become stronger in them. That are ready to die. The things that are, maybe you're losing love for other people. You just like everybody got a false doctrine. It's like this is driving me crazy, Lord. I'm tired of hearing people lying and teaching stuff that ain't your holy will. And don't let the love of the Lord die in you. Remember the first and greatest, the first and the second greatest commandments. Christ is saying in verse two, for I have not found thy work perfect before the Lord. People think that they are alive in Christ, but the Lord has not found them worthy before the Lord. God, Jesus Christ has not found them worthy before the Lord. In the father to be claimed. The spirit has not reckoned, uh, has not actually been sealed. They have not reached the adoption ship of the kingdom of heaven. Hold fast and repent. If you do not watch, I will come as a thief in the night and you don't know when I will come. People are perishing thinking that they are really walking in the Lord. Or I got my blessings because I got monetary whatever and celebrity whatever. And if the Lord came and got them in this breath on this day, they're not going to be with the Lord. That's literally, that's what he's telling them. In this, in this portion, the people in that church have the, in the dream, maybe the church and the physical that you attend, if the Lord came right now, heaven is not your home. Who are you to judge? We're going off the word of God. Everlasting life is in Christ. In the book of Matthew, he says, depart from me for I do not know you. He desires to know us. We're to call to know, each, know him. He knows us. Worship him in spirit and truth. John chapter four, verses 23 through 24. Those are who the Lord, the worshipers that the Lord seeks. Don't play with your salvation like that. No matter is, yeah, I digress. Um, So yeah, be careful of these pastors uh, or anyone in church or the church that you attend. Examine your church in the Lord. Examine your faith in the Lord. Many people are trying to teach and speak, preach on things that the, the Holy Spirit is not a part of. So if a dead spirit is trying to teach you about the truly Jesus, Satan tried to tempt the Lord after 40 days in the wilderness with the word of God. He deceived Eve, but he, he was trying to get one over on Jesus Christ in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ used the the true word and the understanding of it. He knew the understanding. You can't just he couldn't be deceived because he had understanding. He the serpent twisted some words with Eve, and she was eating the fruit and sharing it with other people. Your pastor may be eating the fruit because he don't have understanding. Oh, that sounds like that's what that means. I know my mind is strong enough to know the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit that searches the mind of God. That's why we are called to be in, of the Holy Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. 
you may be trusting someone who believes that they are in the mind. They have the mind of God. They are led by the mind of God, the spirit of God. And it just be not true. They're going to bear the fruit of that. And one of the things is people teaching on things that the Lord ain't called them to teach on and teach them and teaching on understandings that they don't have a testimony of the Holy Spirit confirming or revealing to them. It just sounds right. It sounds right. What did the serpent say to Eve? Surely you shall not die. But death came to them, not physical at the point, but they were cursed. Being led by the desires of the flesh leads to death. Doing whatever your body and your mind thinks is right will lead to eternal death. Instead of believing on the, the Lord, which he is his word, believing in, instead of believing what the word is, the Holy Scriptures, and then actually finding out the true understanding of some of the mysteries of these things that are being presented. Not those who claim to know the mysteries, but those who bear the fruit of knowing the mysteries because they are bearing the fruit of knowing the one who has, who holds the mysteries. All the mysteries are in Christ. That's in the book of Colossians. All things created through him. James Brown, a dead spirit, a dead celebrity, does not hold the mysteries. Maybe your pastor or whoever you are listening to, or maybe you personally have fallen away. You held some mysteries. You had a testimony, but now you're walking away from the Lord. Verse 1 of chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3 speaks of. You have a, they have a reputation up among other men, people in this world. Many people in scripture at the time that Christ walked the earth didn't know who he was at the time. Just looking at him, they didn't know who he was. The Pharisees had a reputation in the world at that point. They had a reputation of knowing God. But Christ is who truly knew God. He was the one truly of God. The son truly was of God and truly knew God. The Pharisees did not. But the Pharisees are the one who had the reputation until Christ started bearing the fruit of the true will of God and his power made manifest in the world. Don't trust the, 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 the reputation of that among men. There's many who are in the church of the dead, the spiritually dead. Come out of the church of the spiritually dead. Yeah, there was no door on the bathroom, so that kind of represented just the, the debauchery, the things of the flesh that are obvious according to Galatians chapter 5, I believe somewhere like verse 19. The things that are against God, I'm going to get into some other things later on in the message, but these things are not of God's holiness. We are called to be holy for he is holy. Um, so let's, I'll continue. So at this portion of the dream, what there was Malcolm and there was Joel. The name Malcolm as from, again, I spoke about the name Malcolm in another message before um, New Levels and Devil series, the New Levels and Devil series on this platform. Um, Malcolm means diligent servant, teachable spirit. Malcolm stood in between me and Joel, and he didn't say anything about what Joel did again. And this is a church. The name Joel means the Lord is my God, God's messenger. So Malcolm rep also represented, though having a having zeal, anybody, Malcolm also represented people who may have zeal. They have a passion. They look like they're on fire for the Lord. In front of you, while they're in the pulpit, when they're street preaching, whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be a physical church. They can still be spirit. They're in the church of the dead. They think they are spiritually alive, but they're not spiritually alive in the Holy Spirit. And don't be afraid with uh, people who try to scare you with uh, just don't be quick. You see, I wasn't quick to attack Joel or speak against Joel. I said something in response to Joel when he mushed me in the dream. But take stuff back to the Lord. Just because something happens does not mean it's of the Lord. Yes, the kingdom of the Lord is uh, a kingdom. A kingdom divided shall not fall. Wait a minute, is that? 
I think I just said that wrong. A kingdom divided cannot stand is what scripture talks about when the people were speaking against uh, Jesus Christ saying that he was using the spirit and power of a, a, a spirit of the devil, Beelzebub or something like that to cast out demons. I think some people have, they, they use that as a scare tactic now, like, oh, don't blast from the Holy Spirit. Satan will, he will try to confuse you. Why would he try to do that? Satan can't cast out Satan. He didn't cast out Satan, but it may, it looked like a, it put on a good show, didn't it? The color purple. It looked like it was a royal activity going on, a royal event by the Holy Spirit, and it wasn't. Well, why would I? Why would Satan try to look like he's casting out a, a devil? with all these works and wonders because scripture says that they will do works and wonders. That don't mean be believe it. Do not be deceived. Even some of the elect will be de is deceived. Some of these people who God has elected are being deceived, thinking that they're truly sealed in the Holy Spirit, casting out demons. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I know it's possible because I've experienced it firsthand not having demons cast out of me, but I've experienced it. And I'll share that testimony when the Lord calls me to. But the idea of thinking like, oh, don't don't blast from, don't let people try to fear, put fear into you about that. Fear about their idols. You choose the Lord. You stay prayed up. You should test the spirit by the spirit, just how scripture tells us when it's the Holy Spirit through scriptures describing that those who are of God, little children, to beware. Test every spirit by the spirit. And I believe is it the book of John or the book of First John? Um, I think it's First John. Test every spirit by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. That means the scripture that's in the Holy Bible. Also be mindful of every translation. Also taking what you are being told or what's being presented, whether it be attempt to cast out devils or whatever it looks like, of whatever presentation that is attempting to be of God, the only holy God, the only living God, test it, take it to him in prayer. If you don't have a more mature way of being told or understood to be confirmed this is truly my my will if he doesn't bring someone else that is a brother and sister sealed in his spirit to help confirm that for you for his glory take whatever you saw and whoever was casting out back to the lord not through rituals make sure your heart is pure i don't care who it is in this world you could be my pastor for all my life. If it starts looking like a whole nother gospel, deuces, you're not taking my salvation with you, with where yours going, if you falling away. So being a diligent servant and having a teachable spirit, Malcolm stood by as Joel mushed me in the face in this church, this dead church, spiritually dead church. But Malcolm's supposed to represent diligent spirit diligent servant so he has a zeal a passion for the lord the pharisees might have a deep knowledge of scripture and can well not deep knowledge they can they can quote scripture they can claim to have deep knowledge of scripture they make plenty of claims they have the garments that's how scripture describes the pharisees and so forth they've studied the word studying the word is not synonymous with knowing the Lord Jesus and speaking worshiping him in spirit and truth it's not synonymous the Pharisees knew the word do they carry the testimony do they bury the do they bear the fruit in and out of season of being led by the spirit of God They have a lot of passion. 
a diligent servant. I'm here every day, street preaching. I'm here every day. Did the Lord lead you to that? His only Holy Spirit. Do you have a testimony of why and how you were led to do that every single day? Because the Holy Spirit wouldn't have uh, saw, you may have heard the story of how one guy got shot. Some people get beat up out there street preaching. The Lord ain't lead. I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit ain't leading you to go get shot and beat up. There was a hedge of protection around Job. Job didn't necessarily know that, but Satan knew that. Again, I said this before in another message. Don't be deceived of people claiming, oh, that's just the devil coming against what's truly of God. No, there's a hedge of protection for a reason. Weapons may form, but they shall not prosper. The Lord protects his own. They might claim to be righteous. He's a Malcolm represented a diligent servant having a teachable spirit. In the New, New Levels and Devils series, I speak about people sitting and remaining under the preaching and leading of a woman, of a minister, of a preacher, where they were no, they were no closer to discerning at one end of the street, nor were they no closer to the Spirit of God at the other end of the street. They were sitting, not coming to the knowledge of truth. This was a dead church in the dream, a spiritually dead church. Is this where you are attending? Are you believing that someone that has a lot of passion as a diligent servant in all they're doing, they constantly at church? Are they bearing fruit of constantly being at church and constantly being in the word of God? Or do they just, one place is one place and in another place it's a whole nother person. Don't let somebody's zeal their passion appear how they they zeal they appear to have to be it, it does not replace it does not supersede the glory of God the true glory of God or his Holy Spirit James Brown to replace supplanter the Lord's glory is not brown it's not represented in the color brown if he wanted it to it could be but it's not Despite all this passion as a diligent servant, Malcolm stood there. There are things going on in that church that are not of the Lord. Malcolm knew what was going on. He watched it happen in front of me in the dream, and he didn't do nothing. He just looked at me like, well, it is what it is. Joel, the name Joel means the Lord is my God, God's messenger. Would God, one of God's messengers, unprovokingly reach over and, and punch you? Would one of God's messengers unprovokedly that has died to their old self and been made a new creation in Christ that have matured from a, a, not only a babe in Christ to being more mature in Christ. Christ, Romans 12, 1 and 2, they have been walking with God, not just in the word and knowing the word, but they are led by his spirit at this point and hold the testimony. Are they bearing fruit of the kingdom of God, of the spirit of God? The maturity of this fruit of the kingdom that they are that they claim to be of the God they can they claim to, to serve. The Lord is my God is named Joel. They claim the name of God. He Joel and that's what that represented. Claim to be a messenger of God. May be called to be a messenger of God. But they are not alive and sealed in the living Holy Spirit. This is the church of the dead. Joel, this may be somebody, this may be you. You've been called to be a messenger of God. Being a messenger of God does not necessarily make you a prophet. The prophet Amos speaks of that kind of very clearly. I've seen other people use examples of how just because you prophesy does not necessarily make you a prophet, but it's kind of plain in the book of Amos. So if you want to read the book of Amos, it's only about nine chapters. Read that for yourself. But you'll see Amos kind of gives the revelation and tells the, one of the people who are trying to judge him, like, I didn't call myself a prophet. I'm just doing, I was minding my own business. I was minding my own business before the Lord called me to speak what I'm speaking to y'all. 
I didn't know this what the Lord was going to have me do, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to the only true and living God, and that's what he did. As a, a true messenger of God. That's not what you what Joel did in the dream. It's not what I what was what should a messenger or a child of God should be doing. Someone who says the Lord is my God, and not a mature. Maybe you're still dying to your old self. Maybe you used to fight a lot and whatever. As a baby in Christ, you're still getting away from that in your in your wilderness season to be nourished from that. Is your pastor influencing you? That I've seen that a person that's been pastoring for years talking about don't try me. Don't make me mad. Oh, or what? Tell me how godly you're going to be. That's not what you should be influencing as a, a somebody that's a leader. But this person, that's you can go look at the sermon. <laughs> the international ministry, they, they said it on camera. They was in the pulpit talking about, you know, we've got, there's pastors and churches on TV. Well, they it's documented now, but pastors hitting people fighting people this is what you influencing and you've been walking with the lord how long no back backtrack that how how long have you how long have you been led by his spirit what's your testimony on that oh you don't hold that testimony well let's look at the other fruit that of his kingdom that should be mature fruit that you in and out of season that you should be bearing Oh, okay, well, that's not really the fruit. That ain't what I shouldn't be listening to you. You should be repenting to enter the kingdom of heaven because right now you're not in the kingdom of heaven. No matter what you claim, Joel, is this who you're listening to? Is this you yourself? Ask yourself, examine yourself in the faith. Um, Because you may have been called to be a messenger of God, a true messenger of God, but are you still acting out in the way that Joel did in the dream? Are you still walking or have you fallen away from God and are in the now walking in a spiritually dead church? Maybe it's not a physical church. Like I said, maybe you were called to do something that one day it involves street preaching, but the Lord has led you away from that. And you rejected the Lord calling you away from that. The Lord is not sending nobody to go out there every day and be getting shot and beat up and all of that spit on. Yeah, they did that to Christ, but Christ was led to the spirit. And he, the, everywhere he go, that's not what happened. He was led by the spirit of God. He was birthed of the Holy Spirit. That's not what he, everywhere he, Christ went, that is not what happened to him. He knew when he was supposed to be in the world. At the time of the festival, uh, when he was with his brothers, Christ didn't even go to the festival at first. He went to the festival disguised at some point. And then he slipped away at every point where they were trying to attack him and come at him. But he wasn't just out there doing preaching. That's a whole bunch of zeal. You just, you just demons manifesting. The Lord ain't called you to that dark place to be preaching. <laughs> That's why everybody yelling and mad. They're not ready to hear the gospel. They've already rejected Christ. You don't know what's going on. You're not spiritually alive in Christ. You're not led by the Holy Spirit. You're just doing whatever you want to do and taking the name of the Lord with you and taking scripture with you and taking the Holy Bible and just saying, I'm of the Lord and y'all just mad and y'all need to receive the love of God. He calls his own to him. It might not be their time to hear the, the gospel. In the Old Testament, certain you had to be a certain age to be a part of certain things, even in the law, even in, I believe, that portion, not even portions of war. Like, that was in there for a reason. Jesus Christ came into his ministry at a certain age. It wasn't just whenever. So again, you may be a messenger of God, but are you walking in the church of the dead? Are you of the church of the dead? thinking that you were alive in Christ. Repent before the Lord's wrath comes upon you in this season, a word in due season. Excuse me. You may have fallen away after being called and chosen. Repent. Come back to the Lord. All right. 
So for the most part, that is the, the dream and that's what it meant. But that also goes into what the Lord is having me share. If you remain in the church of the dead, the church of Sardis, he said, as it says in scripture, Revelation chapter three, he will come as a thief in the night and you shall not know the day when the day comes. You don't know when the day the Lord, that might be your last day. While you're walking around claiming the name of the Lord, it may not be you directly, someone you know. Who knows? Examine yourself in the faith. Work out your your salvation with trembling and fear. Make sure you are right with God. As in, it's, what is it? Uh, I've heard it described as in airplane, just like airplane emergencies, you make sure that your um, your oxygen mask is secured before you go helping somebody else. Now I'm going to be coming from the book of Micah. This is one of the scriptures that the Lord, uh, the spirit of the Lord led me to before I had the dream. So I, I say probably like a day or two, probably, I think two days before I had the dream, I didn't really know why, but the Lord was like reading Micah. I personally, I, I still to this date have not read every single, I don't think I've read every single book of the Bible. It hasn't changed how the Lord uses me and talks to me, communing with his Holy Spirit. If he leads me to a particular book, I'm reading it. Sometimes just go back to a book that he's already led me to. Okay, I'm reading it again. The book of Micah, I believe it's only seven chapters long, but he led me for the to the book of Micah for this message. Micah chapter one is about the destruction, is about the destruction to the people of God and those he has called and chosen destruction to those people that the Lord has called and chosen because of their idolatry. I'm going to read verses three through chapter one, verses three through four and verse three reads for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. And the mountains shall melt under him, so shall the valleys cleave, as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured downward. And then I'm going to read verse 6 through 9 and verse 11. So again, this is again, um, I released the message about the Lord cutting individuals down um, of coming prophecy. That thumbnail was like a picture of people being cut by a pair of scissors from their high places. I, the last message I released at some point, I believe, um, referenced high places. Part three, the, there was a dream in part three of the series. High places, I believe that was with um, Boosie. Um, his name, Torrance, means heal. The Lord is coming to tread upon the high places of the earth. That's in verse three. People who think they are in high places, like a James Brown, a Church of the Dead. I'm a celebrity. He's coming to tread upon these high places in this season. That is part of the coming prophecy in this message, in this season, from the Lord. I did call myself to start reading the book of Micah. This is part of the testimony of the leading of the Lord. If you want to reject it, that's fine. Just make sure that you are truly of the Lord. Because when the wrath comes, then you will know, hmm, wow. I don't want to be that I told you so person because I'm not going to be that. It's a shame. When you true, the Lord is truly using you, you feel the weight. Like you, when you, we grieve the Lord, like you, we feel grieved. It's like knowing that you did all you could to help somebody and it's like, yeah, the Lord has had me speak to people before and it's like, Lord, they didn't listen. And I think this is where I say I could kind of relate to Jeremiah, feeling like Jeremiah, like, Lord, they didn't listen. <sighs> but what else? Like, it, 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 like, it grieves you to have to see somebody grow, go through stuff. The Lord loves us. We're his, we're created in his image. We're called his people. He desires us to be his people. 
but he cannot, he won't go against his word. We don't choose God, his holy will, because people want to try to, I heard somebody saying, oh, well, they just want to kumbaya with everybody. People with crystals and this and that should just chill and we all trying to seek the same God. Yeah, but there's only one way to God. Some people don't believe that. Well, the cards tell you one thing. No, the cards don't tell you nothing. You're speaking to dead spirits and through other things that are not of God. He is holy. Would you would would you try one of them? Are you willing to try all the other stuff? But are you willing to try to get to God through Christ and mean it? Try that and mean it, and watch what happens. Because when the time comes, it's not going to be nice for some, some, a lot of people. So that was verse three through four. The Lord is coming to tread upon in these places. Verse six through nine. Therefore, I will make Samaria as in heap of the field and for the planting of a vineyard. And I will cause the stones, therefore, to tumble down into the valley. I will discover the foundations thereof. And all of the graven images there, thereof shall be broken, and all of the gifts, gifts therefore, thereof shall be burnt with fire, and all of the idols thereof will I destroy. For she gathered it of the higher of an harlot, and they shall return to the wages of an harlot. Therefore I will mourn and I will howl, I will go without clothes and naked. I will make lamentations like the dragons and mourning as the ostriches for her plagues are grievous for it come into Judah. The enemy is come unto the gate of my people unto Jerusalem. So basically this portion of scripture six through nine is talking about um, the Lord exposing the foundations of the idolatry, the sin of these people, the this dead church. I'm sharing part of what the Lord is having me share. He took me to the book of Micah with this dream. I had this dream. Yeah, I was in the book of Micah before I had the dream. And then how the dream relates to this and all the other messages that the Lord has been having me release. I will roll stones down into the valley and expose its foundations. All of the idols will be smashed to pieces. All the things you idolize, the idolatry of the stuff. People ain't noticing that there's people being laid off from slowly but surely from different facets and different companies and sectors of entertainment and work and industries. Slowly but surely, you worship money, maybe that's where you, you're you going to be lost there. What if you worship money and internet was your, you know, the way you made money? But like the other day, didn't the internet uh, communication stop working for a, ba a major um telecommunications company, AT&T. It affected a few other companies, but many people, you couldn't call, you couldn't do nothing. Imagine that's how you're being cut off from the Lord, just there. Well, that's how I make, I need to make content today. Not today. You love money so much that you gotta, I need to, but what if the internet stopped working? What if you lived in like Ukraine or somewhere right now, Hezbollah, or not Hezbollah, <laughs> Gaza, and the war broke out. Nothing you had to do with it. People being snatched away. You don't know nothing about nobody being snatched away. You're still kind of wondering why would somebody be holding a couple hundred people and now you, you willing to have, they willing to destroy a whole country and destroy the rest of the world for a couple hundred people. Why would they keep holding on to a couple hundred people while everybody that they know is being killed? Children, it don't even matter. Would you continue to hold on to a couple hundred people knowing that you started a fight that is killing most of your people? What is holding on to them couple hundred people going to do? Nothing. But would you really start a fight that big and continue to do that? Like, that's something to think about. Like, would somebody really do that? This is a world of Babylon and a system of confusion. People playing in your face and willing to go to whatever ends they want to to make you believe what they're presenting to you while killing innocent people. The Lord is exposing the foundation of the idolatry. So if you were in that type of environment and you worship money and you would start to get stressed out, 
ain't no more content creating. The a wrath that looked like the wrath of the wrath has come. You can't your prayers ain't working. The God they praying to ain't saving them. But it's more than just praying to somebody. The Lord is actually showing, he has people showing us. His word says it first, but he has using people and individuals that are truly of him to give us true understanding so that we are truly in him. Like I said, the, I've seen where, like I said, people constantly speaking and um, Joel in the dream represented attacking somebody. You're supposed to be a messenger of God. He represented, he attacked me without provocation i did not provoke him in any way in that dream is it somebody that you're following that's doing that that's supposed to be your leader again god keeps a hedge of protection around his own satan could only get to job because god allowed it is you are you following somebody that was on a deathbed for some months out of nowhere but it's between the time before they were on a deathbed and before, all the time and before their deathbed, weren't they supposed to be a person of God? So why would the Lord allow that? And they're not actually in a Job situation now where, where they're being blessed sevenfold after they come back. No, they return to the same thing, still punching and smacking people and attacking people verbally with the sword. But they preach the word of God. Are they led by the only holy true spirit of truth? But they, they preach it straight from scripture. There are mysteries in scripture. The Lord says gain understanding. Well, they made it made sense. They made one plus three look like five. Hmm, well, that's, that's nice. But does one plus three equal five in the kingdom of heaven? No, it don't. But they made it look good. It sounded right. I digress. The worship of all these different idols, the work, the color purple, I'm royalty. People preaching about I'm a, I'm a lowercase g God, but you're not actually in Christ. So what God are you think you of? You are lowercase g dead God. He's not God of the dead. He's God of the living. You do what you want to do. You're your own God who used the name. You're using the name of the Lord. You have a passion and a zeal, but the Lord is not approving and the Holy Spirit is not attesting and confirming and testifying of the things you're preaching. It may be the true understanding, but I'm, there's the dream that I'm going to get to later on in the series is actually going to touch base on that. They might be teaching stuff that other people are the true gospel and mysteries that people that the Lord is really using to reveal. They may be preaching on those things, but because they're not truly walking in those things, it still does them no good to preach on them. Yeah, you can still give God the glory, but if they're still attacking people, their congregation and the fleet, the sheep that are under them, the people being influenced in that church are still paying attention to them attacking other people. So they're receiving the true gospel and they're still acting like the person that's leading this church of the dead, the pastor leading this church of the dead, a messenger leading the church of the dead. So what's the difference? I can claim the name of the Lord and still walk like and live like Satan or live like my old self or not die to certain stuff. That's not how, that's not what the word of God says. So the Lord is coming down to tread upon all these things, destroying idols, whatever it may be your idol. It may not just be money. I was just using that as an example. If you were in war and you were worshiping money and doing constantly making content in a time of war or like when the Internet, like I said, communications went out the other day for a lot of people, you couldn't do anything. Imagine that being with now you're praying and seeking God when something truly like that terrible could happen where you're at, like internet gone now i'm going to worship i'm going to pray i'm going to go through all these rituals you gathered all these idols and basically connected them to um you're gathering wages for being a prostitute there was fornication happening in the bathroom in a dream the women were leading men to this The money is paying for what you may prostitute and the money may be paying for your idols. 
worshiping, serving another God while claiming the name of God. All this was happening in a dark church in a dream. Joel was in the dream. It, claiming the name of God. Claiming to be a messenger of God. Um, I will mourn and I will cry because of this. Your wounds will be incurable. And it will all come to Judah. Judah is supposed to be the Lord's people. He's no respecter of persons. Just because you claim and there are people walking around still preaching about blameless, baseless genealogies. The Holy Spirit would not be leading you to be teaching about I'm this and I'm that because of my bloodline and my race. Why? Because it don't matter. <laughs> Scripture already says in another place that those are vain conversations so that would be a clear red flag this person trying to teach me this and preach this to me is not leading me closer to being led by the spirit of god so it's essentially a waste of time well they part they preach something else that seemed to make sense well when you get done listening to their testimony and they're preaching from what they say is true are you drawing closer to the spirit of god do you have personal communication with the spirit of God does the spirit of God testify to your spirit no but just stay under that teaching and leading because for what it's your salvation but give it to that person that's preaching against something that clearly the word of God clearly says because God is his word he's not going to contradict itself but this contradicts they're going to keep preaching you know bloodlines and Adam, well, Ed Edomites and all of this stuff, it, it's okay. I'm going to keep street preaching. I know I just got shot the other day. I got beat up the other day. I'm just going to go back. Zeal and stubborn. Stubborn. I'm a diligent servant. I'm going to be diligent at disobedience. I'm going to be diligent at my idolatry. But not diligent at repenting from what does not lead to the does the, lead to entering the in receiving the spirit. I mean, excuse me, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Like what? That don't make sense. Christ preached and received the kingdom of heaven before him became came John the Baptist received the kingdom of heaven that is at hand. Repent. You still after how many years or however long you've been walking with the Lord? And make sure you got to make sure you're not deceived after that, because again, there's new levels in devils. So there's new level. Devils mean also deception, because we we rise and we we mature in Christ. Does not mean that um, the deception stops; it goes away. No, there's new levels of deception. I talked like I said earlier. People just believe in all. The, being afraid of people trying to scare them about um, scripture that says blaspheming the Holy Spirit and when they came against Christ for what he did that is a sign and a wonder to appear to cast out a demon some people really they just fake, they, there's literally fake people faking to be having demons cast out of them because if it is truly happening by the Spirit of the Lord, it's going to be the Spirit of the Lord I digress though Satan will imitate anything. <laughs> Take it back to the Lord. Verse 13 of Micah. O thou inhabitant of lashes. Well, yeah, lashes. Behind the chariot to the beast. Oh, excuse me. Bind the chariot to the beast of price. She is the beginning of the sin of the daughter of Zion for the transgressions of Israel were found in thee i want to read a different translation you were the first to be led you were the first to lead the people of zion into sin the rebellious acts of israel are found in you a dead spirit a dead spirit the color purple was the main focus of what was happening in that dream a celebrity was walking around in that dream a dead celebrity representing a dead spirit the color purple is 
being performed at church has what to do with God, the holiness of God, to actually learning and knowing his holiness. They celebrate African culture um, or the celebration of what um, ancestors in the movie, from my understanding, because I haven't seen the, the musical or whatever it is, the latest version. But going off the uh, the first movie that I've seen before, they celebrate... Um, wasn't the friend goes to Africa after almost being um, raped and she comes she goes to the tribe and all of that and goes to her roots and all of that um, just a lot of stuff that's not of the Lord like again the color purple is supposed to represent royalty but it, it was being performed in church in front people in the people and everybody that was there was waiting for it to happen they were ready to be influenced James Brown was dressed to a T like a celebrity in lavish whatever clothing walking around in in this place as they were celebrating kind of in preparation for the color purple to be performed. Because of their influence, it was tied to the chariot. To be tied to the chariot is not a good, um, not necessarily a, a, a blessed omen the book of isaiah speaks of those i believe or yes it isaiah woe to those who put their faith in the chariot and the horses the works of man woe to those is what scripture speaks of chariots are they come from under horsepower God doesn't necessarily need horses to make things go do what he to bring his word in the past. He doesn't necessarily need something else. As he told the people who claim to be Abraham's descendants, he could raise up rocks to be Abraham's descendants, to come up as to, to sing the blessings of Abraham to be Abraham's descendants. But he didn't he didn't design rocks to be heirs of his kingdom. He designed, he designed us in his image. But if he had to, he can make those rocks be the, be that. So quit trying to claim a, be, to be Abraham's descendant because he could make that rock be Abraham's descendant if that's what he chose to do. But that's not what he did. He did. He was trying to bring correction to them to let them know you're not Abraham's. You're not walking as Abraham's descendant. You can be walking in Abraham's descendant. That's what I call, that's what I long for you to be. In me, Abraham's descendant, who, who was made righteous by his faith. But right now, I, 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 that ain't what you're acting like. And if you want to keep claiming to be that, if you want to really know, I can make a rock be what you're claiming to be. That rock on the ground could be what you're claiming to be because you're not actually it. People claiming the name of the Lord. And they're influencing other people to walk in the path. And the Lord is charging them with this as well. The rebellious acts of Israel are found in you. Harness the horses to the chariots, inhabitants of lashes. You were the first to lead the people of Zion into sin. All right. That was Micah 13. Um... Micah 1 verse 15 reads, Yet will I bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Marisha. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, Marisha. He shall come unto Adullam and the glory of Israel. Make thee bald and shave thee for thy delicate children enlarge thy baldness as the eagle for they are gone into captivity from thee and that's verse 16 but going back to verse 15 verse 15 is basically saying people who believe to be the glory of God um, people the tribe of Judah these people who have led others into sin into captivity they believe to be actually walking in the glory of God, the glory of the God of Israel, the King of Israel, the God of Israel. But 
there will be another heir brought into their temples that are made for, for the Holy Spirit. So these people are called, these people of Judah are called to be worshiping God in the way that he called them accordingly in according to his holiness, but they are not doing it. So there's, um, they're being led into captivity as they are influenced by these people who were uh, described in verse 13. Someone else is taking over the, the kingdom of God and their in, inside of them is being attacked. Their soul is being attacked. The influence of what they should truly be doing is being attacked. And they're believing it. So they're being taken captive by what is false. But there will be an, uh, excuse me, um, James Brown, again, represented a false spirit. The glory of Israel will fall on another, although the Lord had called these people of Judah, similar to King Saul and King David. Verse 15, the glory of Israel will come to Adullam. Excuse me, yeah, Adullam. I will bring, excuse me, this is another translation of verse 15. I will again bring a conqueror against the inhabitants of Marisha. The glory of Israel will come to Adulam. The glory of God will come upon somebody else. Instead of you, Judah, instead of you who the Lord has called you in the, the dead church, you who may think that you are really worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth today by however you're doing it in this dead church, this spiritually dead church, Someone else is going to receive the glory of the Lord. Will you repent and receive that same glory? Or will you fall into jealousy, envy, that sin that goes into your heart that causes it to wax cold? To now you're really going to be on the other side of God's wrath. Of God's judgment, receiving his wrath instead of his blessings. Well, it don't look like that right now. Okay. This is a word in due season. It's, it's going to be in this season. Well, what this season look like? I don't know. God's patience is, is meant for us to repent. Some people think, well, I ain't get strike down today. I didn't get strike down yesterday. If you read the word of God, just because prophecies don't happen and immediately don't mean that they don't happen. Saul didn't think he would stop being king. And by the time he was, by the end of his, his king, his reign, he was falling, he fell on a sword, his own sword, on purpose. That's what he did. Suicide ain't what God called Paul to, Saul to, excuse me, King Saul. But he rejected the Lord's leading and, and was pleasing the people of the kingdom. He was worried about what the people said to do instead of what God said to do when God was the one who put him in place to be king. Though it was the people's desire that they have an earthly king, God chose King Saul. That Saul, he got replaced. He didn't know it immediately, but it was happening. Instead of repenting, which at that point, it was no repentance, so we're not going to get into that. Let's go into Micah chapter 2 verse I'm going to read uh, coming from verse 3 and 2 verse 3 reads therefore thus says the Lord behold against this family have I despised devised a plague where out ye shall not pluck your necks and ye shall not go so proudly for this time is evil the Lord is going to come down and and yeah from where he is and cut these people down as I've already been talking about the places that they worship on earth. Um, it, they're going to receive his disa the disaster of the Lord to punish these people. And you won't be able to rescue yourself. You won't be able to walk around proudly. There are some proud people. They walked around proudly. James Brown, the dead spirit, walked around, walked past me proudly in this dead church, spiritually dead church. There are people who they walk up, they walked around proudly before the they were on their deathbed. But if that was the case again, the Lord should have had a hedge, hedge of protection around them as they were 
claiming to be preaching the name, the true will of the Lord, the true understanding of the Lord. So why would they be laying on their deathbed? By the grace of God, they're still here. But last time I checked, still doing the same thing. And the people who listen to them and believe they're influenced to believe they're truly learning the will of the Lord, the true understanding of the Lord. So guess what? When the wrath of the Lord falls upon them, it's, it's just going to be a trickle down effect. You allow someone else to lead you away from the Lord, no matter that they had a lot of zeal, that they appeared to look like Malcolm, that they appeared to be waiting and watching on the royal event. I'm going to read verses 8 through 13 now. But he that was yesterday, my people, is risen up on the other side as against an enemy. They spoil the beautiful garment from them that pass by peaceably as though they return from the war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses and from their children have ye taken away my glory continually. Arise and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sore with a sore destruction. If a man walk in the spirit and would lie falsely, saying, I will prophesy unto thee wine and of a strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. I will surely gather thee holy, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as, my, as the sheep of Basra, even as the flock in the midst of their fold. The city shall be full of brute the full of brute of men the breaker up shall come up before them they shall break out and pass by the gate and go out by it and their king shall go before them and the lord shall be upon their heads there was a lot that came through verse 8 and verse through verse 13 yeah my people have turned into enemies that's what basically verse 8 is saying he that, that was yesterday, my people is rise up the other side against an as an as against an enemy. People in the church representing everything that is not of the Lord, spiritually and physically, not of His holiness. They lack the understanding of what it means to truly be holy, because many people are quick to say. Oh, don't you think you're holier than thou? We're called to be holy. Learn what his true holiness is or quit playing like you are a child of God. You're called to be called to be holy. They spoil the beautiful garments from them that pass by peaceably as though they return from war. Joel mushed me in the dream. He's supposed to be a messenger of God attacking people this is what many of them do attack others this is what they do and try to hide it under the guise of correction or mix it in with the form of what they say is correction again that the holy spirit is not leading them to he's not leading them to actually be speaking against people all these different people the lord jesus christ did not walk around finding every pharisees in every synagogue that he could find and tell them that they're doing it wrong he went to at one point what he was in the on the high on the mountain preaching and thousands came to him he spoke to the samaritan woman and and the, this town of people came to him so why what's how come your ministry isn't bringing these people to false the isn't the truth that you're preaching isn't breaking the bonds of the false gospel it's a constant search to attack people that are not doing anything against you people would be mindful of that people who lash out against others especially people who ain't even leaders people they're supposed to be leading back and pointing back to god they lash out at them over something very harmless appearing to be harmless I've seen that before too. 
where you kind of wondering why are you talking to that person like that especially if it was something that was like harmless okay you're human but you should be matured past the point where you you felt some kind of way but you you put, you reined it back in you didn't just let it out because why a, a man who can't control his tongue is a worthless religion So your coat, you, you take coats from those who pass by without a care as they return from war. That's basically what I represented in the dream. I didn't want to be there and the, what was happening in the dream was unfamiliar. So these people of, of, who claim to be, again, know the Lord, constantly attacking people so if they see their preacher doing it and enjoying it they're going to join in on it and influence well i'm still of the lord my preacher does it so it's cool i go home and do it it's cool because they do it and they still a man or a woman of god which again the preacher shouldn't be a woman necessarily even if it starts to be as a woman at some point it shouldn't remain there but we don't digress from that um because there's a legit reason why that can't continue, even if it begins that way for a short period of time. You force women among my people out of their pleasant homes and take my glory away from their children forever. I, talk, I spoke about generations in the preview of this message. There was generations represented in the dream as well. The people that I know in Waking Life by those names, they represented a different age group. I didn't grow up listening to James Brown. I couldn't tell the age of everybody in that dream. But everybody in that dream was not was walking around in darkness in this church. Generations of people tend to go to the same churches or so I went to this church because I was raised in so and so in this church and so and so was in this church and nepotism with the, 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 the daddy and then the son and then okay. If if they didn't start knowing and truly were led by the spirit three generations ago, it does. It's, it's a good chance if they just followed the same blueprint of three generations ago, they still not of the Lord. Well, they got zeal. They got passion as a ministry team and they be praying and they, oh, it look like the Holy Spirit be moving. But do you have, are you being led by the spirit? How long have you been there? What testimony do you have of the Spirit leading you into truth, into understanding, guiding you, correcting you? God corrects those who we love. Did Are those things being taught and are you just rejecting them? Do you read your Bible at all or do you just go get the word when you go to church and that's it? Do you pay your tithe so the Lord loves you? You give money so the Lord loves you. Hmm. Generations of people are this is this is where generational curses are at play. I believe the book of Revelation even again speaks of that too. It's that's even Old Testament. People I've seen people preach against generational curses not being a real thing. This is it. It says they are influencing other people. Um, in Micah chapter one, the chariots, they tie the, the, the chariot and the harlots, the chariots to the price of the beast. Excuse me, the the chariots to the price is what they tie it to. It's how it was described in chapter one of Micah. If I teach you not not if I teach you to walk in a way that is not truly of the Lord, guess what you're going to do? If I influence it, guess what you're going to do? That's why it's a generational curse because Christ took on all curses for us. But now you are living when you're outside of Christ, the curses are on you. We have the curses. They thrive. They prosper. Weapons may form when you in Christ, but they shall not prosper. They won't prosper because you are actually in the spirit of Christ. You are of his spirit. You are being led into his kingdom. But when you just claim his kingdom, 
outside of actually being worshiping him in spirit and truth, you you're a walking target. You're probably being lifted up by Babylon as well. Babylon enjoys that. Oh, they claim the name of the Lord, but they clearly ain't walking in his holiness. Let's put that on the pedestal. Look, that's how you know God right there. They just be claiming his name. They're all the all whole time they're still in the church of the dead. It's part of the church of the spiritually dead, the church of Sardis. But put them on a pedestal. Let's give them a channel and a ministry. Let's do all of that. Let's, let's preach prosperity gospel. No, ain't no long suffering. We don't talk about that over here. We don't do that. Because Christ didn't, there was no long suffering with Christ or none of the disciples, right? Abraham didn't have to suffer through nothing. Okay, Joseph didn't have to suffer through nothing. Queen Esther and Mordecai didn't have to suffer through nothing. David didn't have to suffer through nothing. Nobody, ain't no suffering now. We don't, ain't no long suffering. I know it's examples in the word actually says that, but you don't, we don't that ain't part of this kingdom that we, we claim is God's kingdom. That is, yeah. And then people believe that. And they're going to be wondering why the wrath of God is able to hit them in this due season that's coming. Joseph's brothers thought they had did what they did until the famine came. Anyways, let's get back to the book of Micah. So generation, is these are generational issues. So when you see things happening generationally, God don't want that for us. But your, your parents ain't worshiping God the way he called them to worship God, worship him. So guess what? We're going to be walking in the darkness too, receiving that he can't be against his own word, but his word has always been there for generations. He's not going to go against his own word. God cannot lie. Some people don't like the fact that they like, well, he's all powerful. So why are these weapons appearing to prosper around me? You don't, ain't you, you were strong when you were in the world. The world couldn't break you when you were in the world. So why do you think that everything magically stops happening when you in Christ? It didn't stop for Christ. Read that book that that you that you kind of you want to know more about God. Read that book and the Holy Scriptures in it. So it there's stop being a mystery about why this can look like that and why the, be led by his Holy Spirit. Be Find peace in knowing that if he took you away today in that moment, in that breath, that you know where you would reside. Quit worrying about all these other people. You can't envy sinners. Worrying about sinners. Worrying about everybody else. Because there are people playing and, and acting like they're and believing that they are truly worshiping God and they're going to be receiving the wrath. Arise and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with sword destruction it will be destroyed completely destroyed because it offends me liars and frauds may go around and say we'll, we will preach to you about wine and liquor they would be just the type of preacher you want this is Micah chapter 2 verse 11 this is what the Lord had me coming like they were having a good time in this party in the dream, waiting on the waiting on the color purple. People claiming to be waiting on the Lord to return. And if he came right now, while they were partying and living in that place spiritually, they would be in a lake of fire. But they have they believe so much in their mind being led by dead spirits and idol worship and idolatry and the focusing on royalty and being a child of God and all this other stuff. Instead of actually focusing on God and his leading. That when God comes like a thief in the night, they won't be where they think they're going. And when judgment comes in this season, they might be wondering, why is it falling on me? I will surely gather all of you, Jacob. I will surely bring together the few people left in Israel and I will gather them together like sheep in a pen, like a flock in its pa pasture. They will make a lot of noise because there will be so many people. The Lord will open the way and lead them. They will break out and go through the gate and leave. The king will travel in front of them. The Lord will lead the people. 
that is for the remnant, those who will listen to what the Lord is having me share and many others who are actually being led by the Spirit of God. You will repent and be led by the Spirit of God away from all of this coming in this next season, in this, in this season. On to Micah chapter 3. Um, Micah chapter 3 verses 4 through 12. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be reading this much. Chapter 3 is about against the tyranny of the princes and the false prophets. Um, then you will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer you. He will hide his face from you at that time because you have done evil things. This is what the Lord says about the prophets who mislead my people. When they have something to eat, they will say all is well, but they declare a holy war against those who don't feed them. That is why you will have nights without visions. You will have darkness without revelations. The sun will set on the prophets and the day will turn dark for them. Seers will be put to shame. Those who practice witchcraft will be disgraced. All of them will cover their faces because God because God won't answer them. But I am filled with the power of the Lord's spirit, with justice and with strength. So I will tell the descendants of Jacob about their crimes and the nation of Israel about its sins. Listen to this, you leaders of the descendants of Jacob, you rulers of the nation of Israel. You despise justice and, dis and pervert everything that is right. You build Zion up you do, you build zion on bloodshed and jerusalem on wickedness your leaders exchange justice for bribes your priests teach for a price your prophets tell the future for money but that but they rely on the lord when they say after all the lord is with us nothing bad will happen to us because you because of you zion will be plowed like a field jerusalem will become a pile of rubble and the temple of mountain and the temple mountain will become a worship site covered with trees. The high places will be brought to nothing. The temples in the vineyards will be brought to nothing. All the plans that they think they have and everything that has been appearing to prosper will be brought to nothing. These false prophets, these churches with the false leaders and who are spiritually dead, leading people in the wrong and in, into darkness into captivity, perverting everything of the Lord, perverting his word, because that's not truly what it means. Like I said in the preview, if you said you have a spiritual father, that's perversion of the word of God, because it's clearly going against the word of God, manipulating the word of God to be, to fit what they want to, to believe their narrative, preaching a false gospel. It's coming. This is all about what's coming. Your priests teach for a price. Your priests teach for hire and the prophets thereof prophesy for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? No evil can come upon us. Again, that's a red flag. If you're listening to somebody that you claim and swear up and down all day. Oh, that's a man, a woman of God. But something just unimaginable. Like I said, somebody had, I saw not too long ago was on their deathbed for some weeks out of nowhere but for years they were from what i can understand many will vouch that they were walking and were a man or woman of god why would god allow that to happen but they preach they don't they preach nothing but the bible the word of god why would god allow that to happen to his own hmm? they're doing they're they yeah some part of their influence, their teaching, something is going on that ain't truly the Lord. What will, what will you believe? The fruit that they're bearing? Many of these people who have prophecies, they've been making prophecies, you're going to see where they've been prophesying from. Again, like I've already said, many a times people who give you prophecies with dead people in them. Talking about dead people. Yeah. The, the, 
be mindful. The Lord can use someone dead to speak something else, but that person that would that person would have to be spiritually alive in Christ. Otherwise, it would be going against God. That person would have to have died physically alive in Christ, connected to his spirit by his Holy Spirit. That's where he, he's eternal. We we are made our eternal life is sealed because we are in him. So if that person wasn't even worshiping the Lord, if they came and helped you with whatever, I've seen a testimony about that not too long ago. Yeah, the Lord can use whatever. But when I asked the Holy Spirit about it, he didn't confirm that that was truly of him. It may have helped you gain whatever you gained when that spirit came and talked to you, but it wasn't of the Lord. But I digress. I've, I've just seen that happen with prophecies with people talking about, I prophesied this, I seen this, the Lord showed me this. No, you saw that through divination with that dead spirit, just like in the last prophecy you had. That was a dead spirit. Why are your prophecies continuing with dead spirits? You always have a prophecy with a dead spirit somewhere in there. That's not God. That's red flags to keep popping up. Oh, but that's that's the Lord prophesied. No, it's not. Anyways, you can read that more so on your own. That was a lot to read through Micah chapter. This is a in, in due season, in a season word, a word in due season. I'm going to move on to Micah chapter four or no, I'm going to move on to Micah chapter six, verse two. Um, Glad I got to skip over through some of that. Again, I encourage you to read through all of Micah chapter six. I mean, all of the book of Micah. It's a, a right now word in this season. Micah chapter two, verse Micah chapter six, verse two. Um, Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's quarrel and ye mighty foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a quarrel against his people and he will plead with Israel. Listen to the Lord's lawsuit, you mountains. Listen, you strong foundations of the earth. The Lord has filed a lawsuit against his people, a lawsuit against his people. He is arguing his case against Israel. The Lord is not pleased. Mind you, he still called you, us, his people. But there are some that are truly of him and some that are not. He has a lawsuit against those who are not of him. And he has grace and mercy because they reside in him over those who are truly his own. The people who are in the dead church, who in that dream that operate in all that stuff spiritually may be talking about, oh, give me grace and show me grace. The grace is from the Lord. Don't judge me. You being whatever. That judgment is from the Lord. This message is from the Lord. It's righteous judgment. However, his wrath falls upon you will be on you. It's not us bearing the fruit. You bear your own fruit. All I'm doing is encouraging you in the Lord to repent from whatever is not of the Lord. So people who are watching and paying attention won't be confused. Especially if you call yourself a leader, teaching and preaching the word of God. And even if you don't call yourself a leader, if you teach other people and preach the word to other people and it ain't God's true understanding, you're falling under this, the, the, this deception and the false leading. The Lord has a case against his people. Even the people who I've seen this. Can I speak on that? Okay, I won't speak on that, but be careful of, yeah, just people teaching you stuff that especially, it. I guess my question would be, what is the law for people who get really legal about spiritual law and all of that? What's the spiritual law about, um, what is the spiritual law of grace and what is the spiritual law of love? What does that look like? What is the spiritual law of mercy? How much of it? Like, what is the 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 
the black and white portion of that law. Like, because usually people have a, this is black, this is white. It's spiritual law. So what's the law? If everything about Christ is spiritual law and it's spiritual courts and all that in heaven, what's the spiritual law of grace and mercy? And how does that look in the earth? And how do you, how would you explain that? And how would people, how do you know when people actually get it? When are they forgiven? When do they get the grace? Because everything is, if you break a spiritual law, it's a spiritual law. Na, na, na. Okay. Explain that. What's that spiritual law? Because there seems to be a spiritual law for everything. But what's the, if everything is in court, like, what's the spiritual law? How much grace do you get? How much mercy do you get? Anyway, I digress. So, um, the Lord is coming against those again, like He calls them His people, those who claim to, who claim His name, who claim His kingdom, who claim to be alive and sealed in the Holy Spirit, but they do not longer, no longer live or are truly alive or abide in what they claim. They don't abide in the Holy Spirit. Maybe at one point they did. Verse 6 through, um, verse 6 of chapter 6 uh, and verse 7 speaks of basically the sacrifices that are going to be rejected. Sacrifices that uh, which the Lord is not pleased with. He's not rejected with many people's sacrifice. Like they may try to do whatever. I'm going to read from a translation, God's words translation. Um, uh, oh, I'm in verse chapter seven, my bad. Um, verse six of chapter six, what should I bring when I come into the Lord's presence? When I bow in front of the God of heaven, shall I bring him year old calves as burnt offerings? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with endless streams of olive oil? Should I give him my firstborn child because of my rebellious acts? Should I give him my young child for my sin? You mortals, the Lord has told you what is good. And he's told you what is required of you to do what is right, to love mercy and to live humbly with your God. People will bring. Um, today, that may look like people with a, who have a um, that rejection of these sacrifices um, that the Lord is not pleased with. Today, that can be seen as vain rituals. I go to church. I give my tithes. I be praying. But there's still things in your heart and there's still actions that you do that are not of the Lord. Well, my pastor do that or whoever I listen to do that. So it must be OK. But that's not of the Lord. So if they're not walking in the spirit, you're listening to that. You're listening to their influence. Well, it must be OK. Not dying to your old self completely and truly to be risen spiritually in Christ. To go back to your old self, to owe your old nature. Um vain rituals it could look like having a bunch of zeal i'm passionate i gotta live i yell i got a lot of volume i'm always street preaching again i use that as an example because the lord said it was okay to use it as an example people think that they just having a whole bunch of passion scripture tells us it i believe it in a few different places but even in the book of revelations it's pointed to it's telling us that zeal can work against you also revealing the fruits of your life that are not of the Lord. You can be real passionate about something that ain't of the Lord. It's not of the Lord's leading or his truly his true holy will for your life. Just because you got a passion and you read scripture and attach scripture to it does not make it truly of the Lord. I'm bringing correction all the time and I use the word. But did the Lord call you to that? Well, it says that we are the word is used for correction, but did the Lord call you to that? His spirit wants to lead you somewhere, but it ain't to that. You try to preach on stuff that you don't truly have his understanding about. He didn't confirm what you're teaching. So now you're sharing confusion. Doing works that are void of the Lord's leading, but it's being done in his name. A 
again, most of it, if all of it is done without the leading of his spirit and also revealing the loss of love for those who have fallen away from God. See 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Many people are, op they begin to operate in a place where they're so aggravated and annoyed um, of what they consider to be false doctrines that they are losing love for the people that God still has love for. They may not say it outwardly, but it's in their hearts that they don't love. They don't have the love that the Lord calls us to have for one another. That's one spirit. Why the one reason why this Holy Spirit may still not be working through you the way that you desire it to be, or the way the Lord desires it to be working in your life. The Lord knows your heart. You're right. So why don't you have the testimony of the leading of the Holy Spirit? Like I said earlier, teaching on things based on genealogies, again, is not of the Holy Spirit. I've heard that recently. Well, I'm not saying it's out of hate. I'm just using something that man created. You think the devil would, if you, the people that you call the devil or people that God hate, you think they would make a tool that you could use against them to say that they're not the people of God or that God don't love them? Based on genealogies, they would give you that information to try to disprove them, God loving them? Why would they give you something? It, it, it's right. It's allowed because it just brings confusion. It it goes directly against the word of God. First Timothy chapter one, verse four and Titus chapter three, verse nine. No matter the earthly king or kings or the allowed captivity, God is still in control of whoever or whatever. That has not changed. God has not changed. I shared about the prophecy in the judgment in Micah chapter 1, verse 15, where it talks about people being replaced, heirs. The glory of Israel, the glory of God will fall on a different people or a different set of those who thought they deserved to be have the glory of God on them. God called the people of Judah, but this judgment is against the people of Judah. That's what it's talking about in verse 15 of Micah chapter 1. And it reply, it still applies today. But none of that has to do with genealogy. Preaching, that's a perversion of the, the word of God. Nobody's calling you to go make Blank, false, like just friends with everybody. Go seek the Lord. He may test you with people that you claim you think don't deserve to have the Lord's heart, the, the Lord's love. What will you do? That's part of your test. He knows your heart. He knows that there you at a moment second you may still be willing. You get around the wrong people like Peter did before he got correction from Paul. You may act funny. And not act in the love that the Lord has called you to act in, to be of him. When you're around these people, oh, you love the Lord, but over here is whatever. The Lord ain't somebody else over here and somebody over there. You claim to be a child of God. You a child of God over here, over there. It don't matter. I was uncomfortable in that dream because I didn't understand it didn't matter. In captivity, Daniel still worshiped the only true living God. He didn't hate Nebuchadnezzar. He just wasn't working. He wasn't worshiping no false gods. Joseph didn't just hate his brothers. He might have had to groan over that feeling at some point because maybe he got to there at some point in his heart. We don't know. When the opportunity presented itself that he could still have hate in his heart or to rebuke his brothers and the rest of his family, did he do that? No. David could have hated King Saul. Did he hate him? No. Jesus <laughs> could have hated all of us. Everybody that tried to, that was to persecute him, <laughs> that he was trying to help. He was here showing us the will of the Father. Vengeance is the Lord. They just put into the Lord's hand. You ain't called to hate them. Here, my enemies are left in the hand of the Lord. They're going to get what they're going to get. If they return to the Lord, glory to him. Glory to the Father. 
that's not up to us to be focused on that. Okay, you think they eat them and they edomize. Their, the vengeance of the Lord is, is going to be the vengeance of the Lord. When the people went into the promised land, it didn't matter about the enemies necessarily. It was the important part was to follow what the Lord said to do. Did the Lord say, go take some land that wasn't yours? No. If they did it, it was a bad consequence. Should I, will this, shall I win this battle? Should I go seek this? Should I enter this war? David saw the Lord often. Yes or no? Some places it was peaceful traveling, going to the promised land. It might have been some war over here, but if they went by what the, how the Lord said do it, it was victory. People want to devise their own strategies and ways to enter and do stuff, but the Lord ain't in it. And they still wondering, oh, that's why other people are like, the Lord ain't with y'all. The Lord ain't real. Because it's people that's constantly got their mouth open talking about the Lord and the Lord, the spirit of the Lord ain't leading what they talking about. That he ain't leading the strategies. He ain't leading nothing. He still love them. But in the due season, they're going to be getting the wrath and be probably be wondering, like, Lord, I did not prophesy in your name. Did not do this. Did not preach your word every day. I always was in your word. Yeah, but you didn't preach his understanding. You were not led by his spirit. You were doing plenty of things without his love. All the faith you have, don't we have, could have, didn't matter. Again, see... 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the whole chapter. Micah chapter 6, verse 16. I'm going to read that really quickly. Um, For the statues of Omri or Omri are kept and all the manner of the house of Ahab and ye walk in their counsels that I should make thee waste and the inhabitants thereof hissing Hissing, therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. I'm going to read the other translation. You have kept Omri's law and all the practices of the descendants of Ahab, and you have followed their advice. This is why I will ruin you. Your people will be ridiculed. You will bear the disgrace of my people. Following the advice of somebody that ain't truly of the Lord will ruin you. Well, they just preached about this person ain't truly of God and because of what race they from. All right. You right. Because they've been doing evil. Well, let's skip over here to Titus or 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay. It says, don't be worried about basically vain genealogy. So is the Holy Spirit telling you to preach that or is the Holy Spirit contradicting itself? Oh, okay. It's just you. So will you keep listening to that person or you will you... Let the word of truth set you free that this person is contradicting the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is supposed to be believing them, you need to come from under what they're talking about because they don't care to actually follow everything that the Lord puts before you. This word is what sets you free and leads you closer to God when you believe it by faith and walk in it by faith. This is how you are led to where God is. The disciple in, what is it, John 14 says, Lord, how will we know where you lead us? This is how. Do what he asks you to do. Will you believe the person that's clearly contradicting what the word says? Well, I'm a priest. I don't have no hate. I'm just preaching. They ain't really the bloodline of God. But what does the book say? It says more than once. It's holy scripture. Get away from vain genealogies. That's why they don't carry the true testimony of the Holy Spirit. Because they still, they preach the word. They know what portion of scripture says about vain genealogies, but they still will preach against it and teach against it and spread, willing to attack other peoples, maybe as a messenger of God, like Joel did in the dream. A dark church, a spiritually dead church. The church of Sardis and the leaders, the pastors of church of Sardis, who are also called angels. It says angels, but another translation that the Lord leads me to says pastors. Don't claim to be an angel because you learn that it means pastors as well. If you ain't truly of the Lord, yeah, you could be a messenger, but you ain't a messenger of the Lord. 
You're just a messenger that the Lord called and desired to be his messenger. He desires it. That don't mean that you've made it come to pass. You haven't come into agreement. Abraham had to come into agreement with God by faith. Get up and go where I told you to go. Okay, I'm going to get up and do it. Get up and go where I told you to go. No, I'm not going to do it, but I'm still going to claim your name. It don't work like that. All right, Micah chapter 7. Um, I don't think I have anything to read from chapter 7. Or yes, I do. Okay, Micah chapter 7 verse 2 is basically speaking on the church because it's obvious in the world for those who walk in darkness. Micah chapter two, seven, chapter 7 verse 2 reads, The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none righteous among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunteth his brother with a net. Faithful people are gone from earth, and no one is decent. All people lie in ambush to commit murder. They trap each other with nets. Their hands are skilled at doing evil. That's what Joel did in the dream. That's what that represented. People who constantly sit around and wait for to hear something that they assume or they claim to be false doctrine. And they're not even led by the Holy Spirit. But they're constantly waiting to trap somebody, to attack somebody about what they're preaching or what they're doing. Understand the difference between being a watchman and trying to micromanage as God. They're not the same thing. Um, so this that portion is all of this judgment is about people in the church. So people doing that in the world, people coming against each other in the world. That's obvious. We're talking about people doing this in church, people who claim the name of God. Judgment is coming against these people. They walk in darkness. As they constantly sit around trying to correct people, especially if you're trying to use correction, like I, I like I said before. I've seen the ministries do this where it's constantly talking about Greek and Hebrew to try to correct what the other people are saying or the, to bring true understanding of the word of God. The Holy Spirit is not the language of Greek or Hebrew. So that that that's just kind of a clear like to me. That was easy discernment. Like, why is this constantly the root of what you're talking about? It's trying to use tools of man to make light to bring the glory of God to the conversation when the glory of God is it can be they can be tools used for the glory of God but that is not the glory of God if that was the case there wouldn't be any mysteries we just go read the learn Greek and Hebrew and everybody would know what the Bible means right and everything that the Bible's supposed to mean even the mysteries the true understanding just learn Greek and Hebrew Cool. Boom. Everybody go to heaven. Everybody listen to the Lord. No. People constantly doing this attacking and attempting to correct. When the Lord has not called them to constantly do this because they're they're representing Micah chapter seven, calling themselves brethren, waiting with the net constantly. I did not provoke Joel in the dream, but I was attacked. Um, the Holy Spirit again leads us to truth. It's called it's the Spirit of Truth. Is another name for the Holy Spirit, and will confirm the truth these individuals attempt to constantly bring. That mean even that that includes the mature topics and teachings, in the name of the Holy Spirit, but because the Holy Spirit is not the one leading them to all this correction. That's why what they're trying to bring correction to ain't of the Lord. It's not. And other people come into agreement with what they're doing because it makes sense to them. It's just basically it could, you can could look at it as the Pharisees making other people believe what they're teaching is truly knowing God. While Jesus is saying Jesus is walking the earth saying this is not how you truly know the father. You don't even carry a testimony of the Holy Spirit. I digress. 
waiting around with nets is what they're doing. Um, verse three. Um, their hands are skilled in doing evil. Officials ask for gifts. Judges accept bribes. Powerful people dictate what they want. So they scheme together. The best of them is like a briar. They scheme together. This is basically just, that's kind of the, a representative of the church and what's going on in the world as well. Uh, I'm actually supposed to read down to verse six. The most decent person is sharper than thorn, thorn bushes. The day you thought you would be punished has come. Now is the time you will be confused. Don't trust your neighbors. Don't have confidence in your friends. Keep your mouth shut even when a woman is lying in your arms. A son treats his father with contempt. A daughter rebels against her mother. A daughter-in-law rebels against her mother-in-law. People's enemies are the members of their own households. You see some of this stuff is reiterated in the New Testament. And this is coming from Micah, which is still in the Old Testament. But confusion will be the portion of the fruit will be the fruit that many of these people bear as this judgment comes upon the earth by the Lord in this season. It reveals that they're not truly walking in Christ and, and are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Don't be deceived by those who prefer, pervert the grace of God. To eschew sin, eschew, E-S-C-H-E-W, to eschew sin after claiming the name of God, knowing his kingdom and knowing his will is to, that means to eschew means to intentionally turn away from what is against God, intentionally do it. Not say, keep continuing, give me grace, why are you judging? Because somebody has told you the word, you read it in scripture, that that's not what the will of God is. Somebody told you the true meaning of God. He sent a couple of servants and you still doing whatever you're doing and saying whatever you're saying. So it's not somebody just, just coming to judge you. The grace of the Lord is on you because you're not dead, but um, it's not for us to continue to to uh, validate or attempt to validate, we get from around you. You are marked and avoided. You don't want to listen. The next thing we'll see on you is the judgment of the Lord. I won't gloat in it. I won't wish it upon you or pray it upon you. You will receive your just judgment from the Lord as you reject his true leading and you lead other people astray. You don't turn from sin. Okay, you're in a false marriage. You don't want to turn from it. That's cool. You're in adultery. That's cool. The Lord is going to come on against that. The word tells you the Lord has sent people. You are doing what you want to at this point. Okay. Um, uh, see you later. <laughs> um, and also remember that we are called to be made whole and perfect in Christ with the grace of the time that he gives us to do so every moment and every day. We are made perfect in Christ. So people refusing to believe and partner with the Lord to conquer anything about us that works against the good work that He's lent, the Lord has begun in us means that they are also rejecting the fullness of God. I said, I mentioned that in the beginning of the message or near the beginning that we are made perfect in God. We are made whole in God. Christ tells one of the lepers when he, after he heals them, that their faith has made them whole. They were cleansed from leprosy and then they went back to the Lord to thank him, to give him praise. To believe in his will for their lives. They were made whole. We are made perfect in Christ. So we mature. The more you walk with the Lord, you shouldn't be stumbling over one plus one, two plus two, like school. At some point, it's it's second nature. 
That's why you continue to walk in these precepts, learning and being led by the Holy Spirit, perfected, being whole in Christ. Anytime the Lord is telling or showing us something in his word and directly speaking to us, bringing other people to tell us that's not of his holy will and we keep rejecting it or we're fighting against it, then we're fighting and rejecting the Lord as well. We were fighting the wholeness. That's like fighting to remain in the eighth grade when the Lord wants you to graduate and move on to college. No, I don't, I don't believe that. That's because you're in the church and in, in the eighth grade in the middle of your wilderness season or after your wilderness season, you decide to go walk in darkness. I receive my blessings. The other lepers received what they seek, sought the Lord for. They were cleansed. They didn't go back. Oh, I ain't going back. I got my blessings. They were not made whole. Ain't no gratitude for what the Lord did. I got what I wanted. I don't have to go see the one that made it happen. I'm good. I don't have to give glory to the source. The great I am. I'm good. Again, and some people present themselves as truly giving the glory to the Lord. But don't be deceived. They should be bearing fruit and continually bearing fruit along the way. I don't know if you bear fruit 10 years ago, that's cool. I'm going to need you to be bearing fruit today as you claim to or desire to be a leader or a teacher. And if that fruit you start bearing is, is, is looking contradictory to the word of God and the spirit of God, as I take what you said or what you preached or what you teach back to the word, back to the Lord in prayer, if it start looking like no, then it's going to be a no. I'm going to remove myself. Will you be strong enough in the Lord? Sure enough, put your faith in the Lord to remove yourself from that false doctrine, false leading. Um, that's why the Lord prepares. That's why individuals are prepared and sent. And then prepared and then sent out by the leading of the Lord, not sent out because it is um, people having cursed. Oh, you need to go start preaching. Go, you need to go street preach. It's not the encouragement of people. It's not the approval of man or carnal instructions of man. God can use somebody else to help guide you, use another, one of his servants, an angel of his church, the true angel, a pastor, someone, even it could have been a donkey. That would, ideally, it probably wouldn't be a donkey like it was in the Old Testament because he was doing wrong. So God just showed him in that moment, I'm going to use this donkey, but he would use a servant to be like, no, that's not my will. People ain't hating. It's literally, it's them trying to tell you, I don't want control of your life. And that portion, like I said, I can know what it feels like to relate to Jeremiah, but I also know what it feels like to relate to, um, excuse me, to relate to Jonah. Not that I'm going to run away from, I just like, Lord, you know, they're not going to listen. I've had that feeling. And after a couple of times of people not listening to what the Lord will have you say, it can feel like that. The difference for me is I'm not going to stop doing when he, when the Lord tells me to do it, I'm going to still do it. It just might not be that exciting to honestly like, okay, well, I'll do it. But I'm more, I will probably be more excited and giving God more glory. Um, after I see them turn and repent from whatever the Lord has had me speak about, but other than that, it's like, Lord, come on now. You already know. This whole city of people ain't finna change. But Jonah was wrong. And the wrath of the Lord didn't come as they thought it would. So just again, don't be deceived by people incur man's encouragement. That's why Babylon has made its own system of cranking out people and pastors in churches. It ain't the Lord's leading. Now you're ready to go preach. Now you're ready to go teach. Satan knows the word too. Should he be your preacher? No. Exactly. 
The Lord will lead you. He wants a personal relationship with you. We should be led by his spirit. We will work together as a body in Christ. A true church. So I would suggest, you know, um, just don't be deceived by those who are lacking the spiritual maturity in Christ and understand that that does not necessarily translate into how long they've gone to church or they've been reading the Bible. So I know somebody that's been, they said they, they were trained and they read the Bible since they've been reading the Bible since second grade. And the church that they attend and have been attending for years is not of the it's not the leading of the Lord. Very, I would say, kind people, but it ain't still ain't the Lord and his true understanding and the leading of his Holy Spirit. It, they kind people. Kindness does not equate to the kingdom of heaven. There's more. Our Lord and Savior was kind. That's not all he was. Our Father is good, but that's not all he is. So, um, yeah, read about, uh, read Micah for yourself. It's a judgment word, and it's, again, and it's for this season. Uh, the very end of Micah chapter 7 speaks to those who are truly alive in Christ, the true faithful of Jacob and mercies on the true descendants of Abraham who serve the only living God, who is not the God of the dead. So no matter how much or how they try to claim to be of him, um, don't be deceived. 